um, it is to talk through the adoption timeline for the design guidelines. We had visited this in July at July 16th at our retreat to talk about multifamily and commercial. The proposed schedule we talked about um, is on the screen and we hit a bit of a snag with the schedule, meaning that I don't have the final draft yet. So since I don't have the final draft, we can't ever advertise a public hearing. And um, as with all things, uh, there are always um, grammatical and other kinds of edits to work through when we get final documents. And I remember last time it took us a little while to do those. So we don't want to hamstring staff by having to turn those around in a unmeetable deadline. Um, so my suggested change is that we are hoping to receive them by next Wednesday, so a week from today. That will give staff about four weeks to clean them up, make any final um, you know, grammatical formatting, any kind of changes we would need to make and fix in order to release the draft for uh, public view and comment. The tentative schedule is here with October 6th, the draft being released and the public meetings being advertised. Basically, everything's just bumping back a month from the original um, proposed timeline. We are looking to hold public meetings the week of October 18th and another one the week of November 1st. We don't have exact dates. We're going to use these next couple weeks to finalize the dates, the format. The government center and city buildings are still closed to the public, so that presents a bit of a challenge with public meetings, but we know that the comprehensive plan has kind of set a path for us and shown how successful they've been with a variety of approaches to public input. And I'm going to be working with some of their staff to help us um, be as successful as they were. We were looking to align legal noticing and advertising dates with our standard dates for legal noticing and advertising for meetings. So we will advertise the public hearing on October 29th. We will hold the public hearing on November 10th. So the public hearing is the official um, legal action of the board. The public meetings are more informal. They're for input. They're for sharing the process. They're for gathering um, comment from anyone who wishes to provide comment in the public. But the formal public hearing is tentatively scheduled for the workshop time frame. For November 10th, we won't have any other workshop items that month, so it would strictly be devoted to the public hearing and receiving any additional input from the public at that time. We would offer as December 1st, the final day for the public to submit comments simply because that would give staff the ability to assemble those comments and provide those to the commission in advance of the December 8th meeting, which again uh, would be the adoption and vote. Now, and of course this can change, right? If we receive some public comments and there are issues that we need to work through, we're gonna do that. Um, but this is this is our starting point. That, so technically the public comment period is almost two months, starting October 6th through December 1st. And, you know, of course, if someone sh strongly wishes to attend the December 8th meeting and have a public comment, we're not going to turn anyone away. This is a collaborative process and we truly want, you know, input. I want to thank all of the commissioners for their hard work over the past year and a half, two years. I think we really started this discussions of this in 2019. The pandemic infected, of course, the timing of this, like it did everything, but y'all, it's been you guys have been wonderful, so thank you so much. The work is almost done. Um, we'll look to have maybe a one hour Zoom session with the commission. And of course, like all of our meetings, that would also be open to the public. Um, just to talk through the public comments we've been receiving, 
any pain points the commission might have when they're reviewing the draft and just to give us a, a time to talk. So this will be further defined with some more meeting dates and some more of those details. But we're also going to include, you know, once we have everything hammered out, this timeline, we're going to create a web page. It's going to go on the web page. Everything's going to be there so people know what the timing is, when their requirements are to get us any input. Questions, thoughts, suggestions? You're welcome. Thank you. Any Anybody joining us? Virtually. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I don't think I'm very visible, but I'm here in the corner. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Thanks. Anybody else? Michelle, Chris is Jess. Okay. Well, great. Well, with that, um, I think it's, it takes a few minutes to read our rules and regulations. I think we'll just go into turning everything over to you, Kim, and let, and let's get started. Oh, yeah, we need those, don't we? Yeah, we can fix that easy. The one announcement I I'll make the announcement after you finish okay. reading and swearing people in. Okay. okay. All right. The Charlotte Historic District Commission welcomes you to the September 8th meeting. I'm Kim Parati, chairperson, and I call this meeting to order at 12:58 p.m. Also sitting on today's commission are Jim Hayden, Jill Walker. PJ Henningsen and Phil Goodwin, who are present in the meeting room. The rest of the commissioners participating remotely include Chris Barth, Michelle Bonaparte, Jessica Heinemann, and Chris Muir. Also present are Christy Hartz, Cindy Kohanic, Candice Laddy, Grant Miachi, Jill Sanchez Myers, Linda Keish, and Candy Thomas. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are conducting this meeting using a remote online platform. I ask for your patience today as we proceed. There may, there may be slight delays as we transition between speakers, participants, and presentations. Participants in today's evidentiary hearings were required to provide a copy of any presentation, document, exhibit, or other material that they wish to submit during the evidentiary hearing prior to today's meeting. All such materials, as well as a copy of city staff's presentations and documents were posted online prior to this meeting and may be viewed by visiting the HDC webpage. No case is proceeding today in which anyone contacted the city to object to the remote online meeting platform. For everyone participating in today's virtual meeting, we ask that the following guidelines be observed. Please mute your audio when you're not speaking. Use only one source of audio, computer, or phone. Do not put your phone on hold. Make sure you are in a quiet area. Please turn off or silence electronic devices and do not speak over the person talking or you'll be asked to leave the meeting. Please use the raise your hand tool. Please do not speak unless recognized by the chair or staff. Because the commission is a quasi judicial body, any speaker for or against an application must be sworn in. Due to the remote online nature of today's proceedings, any individual wishing to speak for or against an application was asked to sign up and provide any additional evidence in advance of the meeting. During the hearing, I will further open the floor to anyone who has joined the meeting today by telephone. When it is your turn to speak, please begin by stating your name and address. The review of each application consists of the presentation of the application and deliberation. The application is presented by the HDC staff. The commission will determine if there is sufficient information to proceed with the hearing. The applicant presents their testimony for the application. Other parties wishing to speak for or against will be given reasonable time to present factual sworn testimony 
based on the HDC design guidelines. The HDC may question the applicant and HDC staff members. HDC staff and the applicant will be given an opportunity for a rebuttal and final comments. The HDC shall close the hearing for discussion and deliberation. During discussion and deliberation, only the commission and staff may speak. An HDC member may request the hearing to be open for further questioning. The HDC will craft a motion for approval, continuation, or denial. The majority vote of the commission present is required for a decision to be reached. A final vote by the HDC will end the hearing. If you will be addressing the commission today, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information that you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Please be mindful that we have a court reporter present who is responsible for making an accurate and complete record of these proceedings. The reporter must be able to hear and understand. Everyone present must state their names before they speak, speak clearly, loudly, and one at a time. The reporter will interrupt only when absolutely necessary to get clarification on what was just said or to alert speakers that they are having difficulty hearing or understanding. Are there any questions? No. And let's get started. Okay, I have a few agenda updates for everyone. Um, agenda item number two is going to be heard first today, and then agenda item number one. Agenda item number five, 329 West Park Avenue. We did not receive the required meeting waiver, so we will not be hearing the project today. Um, and just a reminder, it's a really full meeting. Uh, we will continue to keep everyone updated throughout the meeting as to the project status. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over and we are going to start with. Okay. Okay. Who has their hand up? Okay. Natasha. We would like to recognize you. Natasha Maximovich. I've been having difficulty logging in. I'm sorry. Natasha, what project are you trying to log in for? Uh, I've been trying to log in for over an hour for 1316 Thomas Avenue. I think they just begun that number eight on the agenda. Um, did you sign up in advance? I did, and correct. It's, I've been having difficulty. Someone has been coming in audibly. I've been able to hear, but they haven't been able to hear me. I've gone through every aspect of well, audio. We can, <clears throat> we can hear you in audio. Um, are you okay joining in, via audio? Yeah, absolutely. I am tr I've just recently lost the ability to view uh, the room. Okay. I don't know. So on I'm trying YouTube. to go on my check our YouTube okay. channel. We should be live on YouTube where you'll be able to. Right. I'm sharing my screen. You'll be able to Let's see see the agenda and the cases. In the meantime, I will okay. email you a new link and maybe you can awesome. join that way, but we're going to move. We won't get to that for a little while, so I'm going to move on and start with case number. Um, to 801 East Tremont and email you a link. But I think as long as we can hear you and get your testimony, that's what we need. Absolutely. Um, and real quickly, in regards to the testimony, is this specific to the requirements of the windows from the uh, from the we'll, app facing we'll, on the forward? We'll talk about that when we get to it. So um, we'll talk about that case in detail and explain it. Like we do all the others. Okay. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. All right. Um, the first case we are hearing today is 801 East Tremont Avenue. And if I can get it to come up, how do I get this to go away? All right. It 
801 East Tremont Avenue is asking to do a rear addition. The project outline starts on page four that shows the rear addition at the back right corner of the house. It is slightly bumping out. And so because it's bumping out on one side and it's a corner lot visible to the street, this project can't be staff reviewed. Uh, the applicant has provided some Sanborn maps to show the original layout of the house. And at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to the applicant. Um, Jessica Hinman, are you with us? And have you been sworn in? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. And well, I have, here. yes, I have been sworn in. Okay. And I believe that Molly's here with me too. Okay. Molly, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Molly. Hi, I am the applicant. I'm Molly Vilderback. I live at 801 East Tremont Avenue. I just wanted to say thank you in advance for your time and your thoughtful consideration for our plan. Uh, we've lived in Dilworth for in historic Dilworth for over 17 years now, and we love the history and um, we love the fact that we have a historic district to preserve the area. Uh, we've seen what's happened on some neighboring streets that aren't historic district, and we just love the feel of living in our area um and just wanted to say thank you for your time today oh thank you molly molly i'm just double checking real quick have you been sworn in yes i have perfect okay jessica i'm going to turn the project over to you let me know um, what slides you would like to look at sure no problem i think i have to start um with my address right it's jessica heinman oh, yes, yeah 720 Thanks. east tremont avenue yeah no problem um we are here today for a screened porch addition on the rear of a 19, I believe it's a 1938 cottage in, um, in historic Dilworth. This is, um, it's a corner lot and it's a wedge shaped lot. Um, the streets start to start to shift from the, the street grid to the curvilinear streets of Dilworth at this intersection here. And so um, kind of holding the spacing of the lot, the and, pushing of the lot and pushing the uh, and pushing the uh, and pushing the street so I'm getting some the, feedback. I'm getting some feedback. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my phone says that I'm coming through a speaker named Natasha. Yes. Yes, Natasha, would you please mute yourself? Okay, is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, sure, no problem. Um, so we're we're starting to make the shift to the curvilinear portion of Dilworth, and that changes the spacing. And of course, we're a corner lot, so we have two street views. Um, on the slide that we're seeing now, which for me is slide four, I think the benefit of this is understanding kind of the history of this of this cottage as it relates to our review today. The cottage went through a renovation in addition in 2004, 2005. Um, I don't have a copy of that COA, and of course the guidelines have substantially changed since then, but, um, but I think the Sanborn map will help us understand, you know, what it originally was. And we were able to obtain some drawings from back in 2004, 2005. Um, if you look at the, uh, the rightmost um, site plan in this image and the Sanborn map, um, you can see that it, there was, um, there was just a sort of a leg um, to the interior portion of the lot that came out in the old drawings that's tagged as an unheated storage room and the rest that was boxed in was tagged as a back porch that was that was uh, made into a family room for this house. There was also um, a side porch that was, I think, enclosed prior to 2004, 2005 that Christy is pointing to now, I think right now, and that's a mudroom on this house, but I believe that was prior to this 2004, 2005 COA. So, um, the spacing to the right side, I'm actually just going to go straight down the guidelines real quick. Um, we, we aren't changing any setbacks. We're, of course, holding as far as we can to the interior of the block with the screened porch. The, um, 
the spacing along the block um, because of the curve starts to starts to, to gap a little bit more and the neighbor to the right side has put in an addition towards their left and this um, this screen porch while it is technically visible from the street is, is holding the spacing of the block if that makes sense because of the wedge shapes of the lots there um, you can see that in the block footprints which is my slide eight and I think you can see from slide eight the relationship of this addition um, in the surrounding context with the block footprints that it's pushed as far as possible to the interior of the lot. So if I can jump to slide 12, which is the left side elevation, that's the elevation that faces Lenox Avenue. Um, so this is the side yard. You can see where we've added the screened porch. It is pushed as far as possible to the back of the lot at this side. So we're requesting this screen porch that it, it floats, its mass floats with the screens and it ties into the existing roof forms. And then we are also requesting um, on the old side porch mudroom, just a little bit of an overhang at the door there, which, um, which matches the other historic overhangs on the house. Um, Christy, if you could go to slide 13, which is the rear elevation, there are some 3D views here that can help understand the massing. It's really simple. It's separated from the back wall so that it can float as this sort of open screen porch. It borrows some soft curves from the existing historic overhangs and brackets so that we have a common language there. Um, you can see the proposal for the overhang at the mudroom to match the existing overhangs. And then we're proposing, you know, an, an option for a trellis to soften the back wall of the house. Um, the roof forms tie really cleanly into the existing roofs. Um, it's one story, so it's significantly lower. It's pushed to the back of the lot. The pitches all match existing and the rake and pen eave details all match existing. Uh, the cornices and trim match existing. We are proposing at that soft curve on the back porch that we will use um, a, a minimal back pan. We think that we can more successfully accomplish those curves with bent wood than we can with raw cut wood, um, but that would be minimally visible. Um, the doors and windows. So um, I will just reference back to the Sanborn. We, Chrissy, you don't need to change the slide. We can stay on this slide, which I think is 13. Um, the doors and windows on the back of the house were all replaced in that 2004, 2005 edition. So none of these openings are original because that edition in 0405 was all to the back of the house. So we're proposing that these non-historic windows be opened up with a big glassy opening to the backyard and that the non-historic doors be replaced so that they all match. Um, again, none of those are historic. Um, Christy, if you could go to the right side elevation, which, yes, that's it. Uh, I, can you tell me what slide number that is? I don't have that number in front of me. Slide 14. Slide 14. Thank you so much. So on the right side, you can see in the existing house, the addition that was added in 0405 did not have any windows in it. So our proposal is to, you know, add some windows on that side to mitigate the blank wall over there. Uh, our materials are wood lap siding to match existing in depth and exposure wood corner boards, rakes, and pen eaves to match the existing with a minimal wood back pan at the curves. Uh, we're proposing clad wood windows at non-historic openings, clad wood doors at non-historic openings, and we're requesting stucco at the chimney on the back porch. The reason we're requesting stucco is because this house is right at grade. Grade is, is up against the bottom of the siding at this house, so while it has um, a minimal brick foundation, the brick doesn't have very. Hey, Jessica, you, um, we've lost you. You sounded like you were in a cave and we couldn't hear you. We can't really Can you please repeat for the court reporter? Like stucco is consistent with Jessica, the historic parge concrete that's found Jessica. Um, a lot in the um, surrounding context and that it can be handled in a monochromatic way with the house. Jessica, a lot more. It'll be a lot more quiet and unpretentious and will not call itself out. It Jessica. Consistent with the historic cottage. Jessica, and, Jessica. Um, then either stone or brick. Christy, we can hear you fine. I don't think Jessica can hear you at all. I know. We're not we can't hear her trees. at all. Um, we are showing a tree protection plan for the existing tree to the north 
Uh, we are showing HVAC screening. Historic rear yard coverage is 34% as taken Sanborn real wall. And um, it's, it's any on future her. landscaping plans would be to staff. The last thing that I'll mention is the staff analysis mentions the federal requirement to demarcate the historic structure from the additions, and we're totally happy to accommodate that. Sorry, I'm getting messages that you guys cannot hear me. Jessica, you guys hear me? no, we haven't we haven't heard the past Hello, probably me? five minutes. No. Those of us on the phone, well, I can hear her. Okay. But I think you guys in the room can't. We can't, and the court reporter cannot. And we've tried to talk to her to get her attention, and I don't think she can hear that. Uh, can you guys hear me now? You guys hear me now? A little better. Yeah, give me one second. You need to start basically from... You explained about the blank wall and you started in with the materials and then we did not hear anything else. Thank you so much. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Sorry, the Bluetooth in my vehicle picked me up. That is my fault. Okay. So the, um, the blank wall, we are mitigating that with the um, addition of some windows to going back in my notes. The addition of some windows in the blank wall. Uh, I don't know if you had me on audio when I said this, but the rear doors and windows that are not historic were installed in 2005. Uh, we're not requesting any changes to any historic windows or doors that um, we would like to add the windows to the right elevation blank walls to mitigate that expansive blank wall. We would like to replace the non-historic windows on the back with glassy doors to open up to the yard. We'd like to replace the other non-historic rear doors to match for continuity. And all of the divided lights would be proportioned to the historic windows. Um, did I have audio when I was talking about materials? Um, no, that's, we heard all the door stuff. We missed Great. materials and you are, something is crackling on your end. Okay, try now. Okay. Can you hear me? It's still. It's still crackling. Yes. Can you hear me if I talk like this? Okay. I'm going to turn off my Bluetooth. Okay, can you hear me? Is that better? No, but keep talking. Talk through okay. materials. Um, you said I caught something about materials, rear yard open space, and maybe just keep it super succinct. Yes, ma'am. The materials are wood lap siding to match existing, wood corner boards, rakes, and pen eaves to match existing, clad windows at non-historic openings, clad doors at non-historic openings, and stucco at the chimney. There is a brick foundation which is does not have a presence on this property because the grade is so close to the wood. There's a lot of stone on this property that is not historic. And so our thought is the stucco is consistent with the historic hard concrete found in the surrounding context and can be accomplished in a monochromatic way that has um, less of a presence on this property. The landscape plan would be submitted to the staff separately, though we are showing screening at the HVAC. There are no trees to be removed. We are showing a tree protection plan. Um, the historic rear yard coverage is 34% as taken from the Sanborn rear wall. And the staff analysis mentions the federal requirement for the demarcation of the historic structure and the additions. So we're totally happy to accommodate that. Um, to the best that I can tell, the vertical board that is located on the right side elevation 
was required by the HDC in the 2004-2005 edition. It can be seen in our existing photos. And the only clue that we have about the, you know, the line to, to meet the federal requirement is that in the foundation, the relationship of the crawl space vents changes at the HVAC units, which is roughly where the existing vertical board is, but there's just not a lot of visual clues beyond that. So we'll put the board wherever it needs to be. Uh, that's everything. And who wants to speak for or against this application? No. Okay. Uh, commissioners, questions of the applicant? Any questions before we close for deliberation? Okay. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes, um, and I think Jessica touched on this, and but I, I also saw it in the staff notes. So it, at first it was a little challenging for me to understand where the addition started on the, what is that, the right elevation? So is there anything that can be done to, sh as like a demarcation of where the this recent addition uh, is being is starting and where the previous edition ended. Sure, the, the existing vertical board is the 1 that the HDC required when the unheated space was converted to heated in 0405. That's the existing vertical bar that Christie's pointing to now. And that's also where we see the transition in the crawl space vents in the foundation. Um, so everything past that bar is 0405. Um, and I totally understand there's a, a federal requirement that we need to comply with with a vertical bar, but I'm neutral on where that needs to occur. Um, I, I don't have a, a strong inclination, although I think that in 0405, the HDC then probably put it in the correct place based on the Sanborn information. So, right. And Michelle, my comment was about sort of this rear transition, mm -hmm. Michelle and Jessica, to the new. And if, you know, you can see the, the change in roof line, um, I wasn't sure what, if anything, was visible from Sanborn maps. You know, with this being an open space, and that is absolutely at the purview of the commission. Slide four. Jill, can you use your microphone? Thank you. I, I don't see where the fire, the exterior fireplace is on that drawing and I would imagine it's. Yeah, yeah, so my question is, is that. Going to encroach in the setback. I don't, I don't see how it couldn't. Sorry, yeah, it's um it's only a foot off and it's halfway down, so it does not encroach in the setback now. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Any additional questions, commissioners? Before we close for deliberation. Going once, going twice. All right, let's close for deliberation. Michelle, why don't you lead us on this one? Sure. I I Still, probably I'm not completely clear. I know Christy made the uh, clarify the comments, the staff notes, but I was just, um, I guess, trying to make sure that what I was thinking was in line with um, additions uh, 7.2 number three, as far as attempting to attach to new additions or alterations to an existing building in such a manner if additions or alterations were to be removed in the future. So I know typically we can tell 
um, where the addition, there's usually like a bump out or an in, indent, indention of some sort. So that's kind of the only thing that I was still a little unclear on as far as um, this is concerned, but everything else looks amazing. Okay. Um, Christy, is, it looks like, wait, let me pull this up. The left side, um, there is a line of demarcation for lack of a better way to put it. And on the right side, is that what you were talking about? That there needs to be some sort of, because the, and, and I think Jessica said that they would be open to doing that. Did I hear that incorrectly? No, I think you heard that correctly. Um, and I think it was simply that showing right how the house has grown um, through the years and to show the evolution of the additions, um, just maintaining this corner board probably in that same location that it's at or wherever might be appropriate. Sure, and, and then it speaks to Commissioner Bonaparte's uh, point on the guideline that, Correct. that was referenced. Can yeah. I ask a question? Does, does that demarcation line need to show on non-historic uh, additions? Typically, you know, it depends on the addition and how we advise people is, you know, in, 30 or 40 years, can you read the house? And when you're looking at it, can you see where the additions occurred? Um, it's completely up to y'all. This is minor. And if you feel it works better without it, then that's fine. I personally like being able to read the history of the house, but that's just me as one commissioner. Commissioner Goodwin. I would say, <clears throat> I understood correctly that the line of demarcation to the original structure is to the left of the windows, that vertical line. That, is that correct? So. That's the way um, Jessica explained it. Now, if you look at the Sanborn map on slide four, I really feel that this was likely an open porch. So that probably would have been the line of the heated open house. So that's why the commission likely required a corner board there when this open porch was filled in. And since we are expanding, you know, an infilled original open porch, that's where my thought with requesting the corner board came from. Commissioner Bonaparte, what was the guideline you referenced again, please? Uh, 7.2 number 3. 7.2 number 3. Yes. Attempt to attach new additions or alterations to existing buildings in such a manner that if such addition or alterations were to be removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the building would be unimpaired. So this would be a new addition to the current building. Commissioner Henningsen. Well, and, and just to add, if you read guideline 7.2 number 6, it just says new work should be differentiated from the old while being compatible. It doesn't say original, right? But we can read. Yeah, yeah. there's flexibility. So it, it, it sounds like, uh, thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte and Commissioner Henningsen. It sounds like uh, the only challenge that we're having right now is just the 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 line of demarcation which which um commissioner bonaparte brought up and i think uh the applicant has has addressed do we have any other challenges or issues with the the project okay i'm going to kick it back to you commissioner bonaparte <laughs> so is it, it, it we're and we work as a team right so it sounds like this is, we are good with this. We just want to make sure that that line of demarcation, however, it shows up, which I think staff can work mm -hmm. with the applicant on, uh, is addressed that we're good to go. Okay. Oh, wait, uh, Commissioner Henningsen. And, and just a comment that line of de demarcation could be on the other side as well, and it may occur naturally on, on the other side. Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Ex Exhibit on both elevations, right? Oh, I was thinking that it did. Will you answer that for us, Christy? 
Because I think there it not I think it is on the other side. And, and My feeling was it needed to be on this side um, because of the design of the other side. It kind of occurs naturally with the open the open space. And it's something that can be sent to staff if, but, you know, I think we spent a lot of time talking about it and should just make a decision and keep rolling. I agree. Motion of Bonaparte. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Okay. Um, I move to approve this application with the condition that a line of demarcation is added or shown on the right elevation where the old addition and the new between the old and new addition and be sent to staff for final review. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte. Do Second. Seconded by Commissioner Hayden right out the gate. All right. Any uh, discussion of the motion? I probably should add some um, guidelines. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Um, I guess my own friendly amendment or just that do an amendment. You can just add to your motion, I think. Okay, and I like to add, uh, this is based on additions 7.2, numbers 3 and 6. All right, still good, Commissioner Hayden? Yes. All right, thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte, Commissioner Hayden. Any discussion of the amendment? All right, let's vote. Uh, da, 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 da. Just a moment and get my list here. Okay, Commissioner Walker. Yes. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Commissioner Barth is not part of the meeting. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Mirren. Yes. Commissioner Parati, yes. Motion passes 7 0. And let the uh, record show that Commissioner Barth is not a part of the meeting and did include him in the original uh, introduction. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jessica. All right. Much. On to number two. Okay. The next application is 1921 Thomas Avenue. And the applicants are John and Ann Lucas and Chris Barth. Chris, John, Ann, are y'all with us? It's John Lucas. Hi, John. Um, Chris, are you with us? I am, yes. Okay, great. Have y'all been sworn in? I have. I have not. Was that a yes, Mr. Lucas? It's no, okay. but I'm not no. sure. Okay. okay. I okay. think Chris was going to be doing the speaking, but either way, I can't. Let's just swear you in in case you have something that you want to add, okay? Sure. Uh, if you will, raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, this next application is for an addition to the left elevation and some front porch changes. This uh, this structure had a major overhaul in 2006 and it now has new owners who are looking to maybe bring the compatibility of the design of the front porch back into uh, fitting better with the streetscape along Thomas Avenue. So with that, Chris, I'm going to turn the application over to you. I'm on slide five. Actually, I'm going to start on slide six. If you would like to start somewhere else, just let me know. Okay. Uh, do I need to state my address? Oh, yes. Right sorry. Now? Please state your name and address for the court reporter. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chris Barth, architect, 320 South Tryon Street, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so first off, I'd like to thank the commission uh, for all their time and hard work. Um, as well as um, the uh, architect that referred me to uh, to John and Ann Lucas. Um, also, I'd like to commend uh, John and Ann. Um, for those of you who have seen this house in person, uh, know that they have been doing a lot of work and maintaining the house 
um, some of which has been restoring the historic windows uh, through one of our um, reputable companies. Um, and actually a lot of the, the stuff that I'm going to be bringing up here today was actually their idea. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, these particular uh, homeowners have a lot of interest in maintaining the historical integrity of the house as well as the neighborhood. And I think you'll see that reflected in uh, what's presented here today. Um, so what we're looking at on slide six is actually the original plan as done by um, a previous designer. Uh, I would imagine these are as built drawings as well as some pictures before the renovation edition in 2006. Um, as you can see, it was a small bungalow on Thomas Avenue. Um, no front porch, no second story. Um, and Krista, if you want to advance to the next next slide, perhaps, as you can see here, um, they they pop the top to this house, adding, I guess you might say a second story or a half story above the main, um, fairly extensive addition, uh, including a porch that extended towards the street. Um, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that this likely would not have been approved in today's guidelines, um, yet here we are. Um, so one of the things that uh, John and Ann had brought up to me um, that the front porch is fairly narrow and um, not really, you know, usable for how most of the, the folks on Thomas Avenue and in the neighborhood uh, interact with their front porches. Um, as well as you know the front columns just seem a little bit out of proportion uh, a little bit out of scale um, there's there's some issues with that that we'll get into um, so really what we'd like to do here is, is sort of redefine how the front porch is handled in its language architecturally and detail wise um, so that it's more functional more usable for the the lucas uh, lucas is here um, let's see maybe advance one more All right, so on slide eight, this is um, from some source material from the Lucases uh, from the previous homeowner, uh, pictures of the house during its construction in addition, um, showing, um, you know, some concept images of how they, you know, envisioned adding this porch on, some detail images as well as some progress. Um, you know, I think their original int intent that was that the, the uh, front columns and front porch was a little bit uh, less impactful to that um, that front uh, outside space? Um, not not sure it was was achieved as desired, but um, and you can let's see, let's go to go one more. So you can see here in, in site plan. Um, the front porch to the plan right. Um, that's that's the area we're going to be looking at towards the street as well. Um, something that we'll, we'll probably talk about after that. Um, the back, uh, we're doing a fairly modest addition uh, to give the Lucases a little bit more uh, modern, modern, um, uh, modern living, living uh, situation there. Uh, that was approved by staff previously. The part that we're, I want you to focus on is is um, a covered porch uh, that we'd like to incorporate into that staff approved addition uh, that would allow the Lucases to to enter um, their back kitchen from their driveway as well as from their backyard uh, more easily and out of the weather. Uh, advance to the next slide, please. A little more detail on that. Uh, again, showing the original plan to the left as it exists today with the um, proposed plan on the right, including that staff approved addition, as well as the two areas that we're gonna be looking at with the, the porch modifications. Next slide. Uh, a little before and after of the, how the front elevation will look, as you can see on the top right image, the existing front elevation, those, those front columns and P, uh, brick piers seem a little bit out of proportion with the overall scale of the house. Um, and then the bottom two images just reflecting uh, what, what the Lucases would like to propose 
again, minimizing um, the impact of the uh, structure on the front of the house there, as well as the columns. Next slide. And uh, again, as, as Christy's focusing on right here, we see a side elevation on it, on that front porch, as well as uh, towards the back of the house. There you see that, that rear addition, uh, once rear addition with the um, bump out of the covered, covered entryway. And, and again, viewed from the rear. All right. So here you can see um, just the overall mass and scale of the existing columns on the front porch compared to the, um, the proposed on the right. And if you would, Christy, go down one more. I believe I think I have a, a section through. So here you can see, um, you know, the overall scale of the um, of the wall uh, along this porch is is you know reduced massively, and and just allows for you know a little bit easier uh, space for the Lucases to to occupy that porch as well as it's you know appears more open aesthetically. Um, you know, which we think would be better for, you know, engaging with the neighborhood and, and such as we know, uh, you know, folks use these porches. And then if you would um, go back to slide eight, maybe. Seven, please. Um, this is slide, I'm oh, sorry, no, uh, nine. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so. So this slide here reflects um, some houses just within fairly close proximity of the Lucas's house at 1921. Uh, the the one on the top is right next door, uh, and then the other three or further are further down the block. Um, these homes reflect a similar language um, that they are seeking uh, for their their front porch. Um, you know, obviously trying to draw on uh, context around us and, and some sort of precedent within the neighborhood and within the architecture. Um, I'm, you know, fairly straightforward project. Uh, that is all I had. John, Ann, I don't know if you had anything to say. Oh, uh, there is one thing I do want to mention. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the last slide, Christy, if we can. So currently the front porch is poured concrete. Obviously it, it is not original to the, the structure. Um, as the Lucas's moved in, they noticed that there was some structural fail failure with the slab. It is cracking fairly evidently. And um, unfortunately I don't have pictures uh, to go along with it. Uh, but what we'd like to do is also put brick pavers um, on this porch to sort of hide that uh, that structural cracking and failure um, uh, along with this this uh, this modification here. That's all. Yeah, it, it seemed like when they created the porch, they took some shortcuts on the foundation, and uh, it, it did have a significant crack right beside the front door uh, from the house to the street. And it's you know got a little bit of a drop. Also, along the wall of the house, you can see where the porch is pulled away from the concrete is pulled away from the, from the porch a little bit. When they added the second story, they did put in uh, more piers under, underneath and girders to support the house, but they seem to have missed on the porch, and it's, it's caused some some issues here. But I think that's it. Thank, thank you, Chris. It was. All right. Thank you so much. Do you have anyone on the line? No. Okay. Commissioners, questions of the applicant? Commissioner Henningsen. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Chris, a handful of questions for you. Uh, how deep is the porch currently? Um, from the thermal wall of the house to the, um, the low wall in front is about four feet. Chris, if you go to the, the floor plans, I think I have a dimension there. Yeah, so you may need to zoom in. I think it was roughly four feet. And uh, if you pan to the right, we can see what the 
the gain is so it's about we're gaining about 12 inches there for for them okay. in sitting space okay and this kind of leads me to my next comment not a question i mean generally speaking with with front porches even ones that are really close to the ground it, when you see that brick wall in the front you also have it, there's also brick fill in on the sides of the porch as well right so you just have one entry in it, it, at least that's at least that's incredibly common in Wilmore, right? But again, your your porch is incredibly shallow. So generally speaking, I don't know if when we get into deliberations with any of the other commissioners would have how they feel about just having that brick wall, the, the brick fill in between your two columns in the front and not included on the side as well, maybe a non-issue. So just a comment there. My other comment though is brick pavers over the con concrete slab. That, that, that's incongruous. I mean, we see wood perpendicular to the house, we see poured concrete and we see terracotta tile, you know, whether it's square or actually kind of broken up. And I, are you intent on, really intent on brick or are you open to other materials? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd have to consult with the Lucases. I think that would be, we'd be okay with other materials. Um, this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. this was more more just a response to to you know once that structural issue is mitigated to to hide some of the sure. kind of slab cracking and that that sort of thing and and just make it a little more clean. Um, you know, we thought it was a nice continuity from the the brick piers and wall. Um, and to your comment about the specifically to the brick walls um, on the two sides currently it's not open. Um, and it is fairly a narrow porch, so um, yeah. you know. I think in order to provide that openness and and um, egress, especially towards the driveway side, which is the left hand side of the um, of the plan here, uh, you know, we'd we'd like to keep it that way. You know, the, sure. the one side that can see us adding a wall maybe is on the right hand side, where you know there isn't a driveway or some sort of need for egress. Okay. Uh, last comment for staff. So, in terms of the column detail, you know, with the trim at the top and the bottom, does that meet our requirements? Christy, I, I know we've got like a slide that goes into all this detail in terms of, you know, the trim, top and the bottom of the sure. column. Yeah. Um, I would say more so than what's there now. But there may be some attention to particularly the top, top. detail that might be needed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, something that using the get your house right book or examples from down the street staff can work with the applicant on. Perfect. But no other questions. Thanks, Chris. Thank can you. I respond Commissioner to that, Anderson. Christy? Yes, of course. Um, so uh, completely fine to to handle the base and cap of uh, of these columns in whatever way the commission or staff feel necessary uh, i will say that the, the overall um format or language of this porch is you know doesn't necessarily follow um you know the architectural order that we typically see with columns and beams and front porches and actually as it as it as it's expressed here, it's basically a, a flat ceiling with with no beam. Um, the solution that we're proposing here is basically, you know, their bet or our best um, method with with uh, providing more of a historical um, um, situation. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Commissioner Henningsen. Sorry, Mr. Barth, one more question. Are you asking to paint the brick as well? <laughs> Actually, haven't uh, spoken to the, the Lucases about that. I would say likely not. Okay, thank you. Perfect. John and John and Andy, you guys, are you guys okay with not painting the brick? Yeah, that's fine. We, we just painted the house, actually. Uh, it's We did paint the brick on the backside and on the sides, as you can see, and we matched the the green stain that we put on the house. So we did a, a green for the main sides of the house, then we did a brown on the window trim, and then the windows we did a burnt orange in the door. 
And I could, you know, I could go either way. I was painting the, the wall on the porch. Um, so, you know, either way, it's, it's fine. Uh, we do have some painted brick, though, throughout on the back and the side. Yeah, I will, I will say, as, as John mentioned here, the, the brick, uh, all of the brick on the house foundation and, and uh, piers and everything was already painted. Yep. Okay. Updated. Yep. That's visible in slide seven. Okay. Thank you, PJ. Any other questions, commissioners? Before we close for deliberation. Going once, going twice. All right, let's close. Uh, PJ. Yeah, I'll just hit three things. Brick pavers, we had an application on Westwood and Wilmore. We, we denied for using brick pavers. It's incongruous, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, sorry, I'm sorry. Got all excited. Sorry, <laughs> apologies. Um, three comments, three points of light. One is the material for the porch. We denied an application in Wilmore on Westwood for using brick pavers. It's also incongruous. So I would, I would propose either poured concrete or terracotta tile for staff to approve. I also would want to call it out that we're not going to, that the brick is going to remain unpainted and then, you know, staff to approve the column detail, the base and the cap. Those were my three basic things. So the, the stuff about the brick, you know, filling in the brick on the porch, that was really, a, you know, a comment for what I see with brick, brick porches in Wilmore. If any other commissioners feel strongly, we can add that, but those were the three items I had. Any thoughts on the addition, the covered porch that they want to add? No, no okay. other comments on the covered porch in the rear. Okay, Commissioner Murin. Yeah, I just wanted to echo that that the the brick return on the front porch I think would be a nice um, addition to that. That was something I had in my notes, but also um, I I would lean towards putting back a, uh, a um, concrete uh, as the material. Um, to kind of, I mean, even just looking at the, the precedent that they pulled out from the street, that it looks like all of those have that material um, in that context. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mirren. So, to you and Commissioner Henningsen, I'd say that their goal is to open up the porch and putting uh, the, the brick wraparound uh, seems to close it off. I mean, a compromise could be on the right side, right? Where it doesn't have access to the driveway and it still achieves that, still gives that same look. Okay. What do well, you I, think, Commissioner Mirren? I think from a, a standpoint of, you know, if this house was built 100 years ago or 50 years ago from a structural standpoint, I don't think that wall would just hang out there. I think it would have to be tied back to the structure somehow. Okay. So uh, would you, Commissioner Henningsen is saying that he's good with the compromise of putting it on the right side where it's not needed uh, or where access to that side is not needed. Do you feel the same or do you feel strongly about putting it on both sides? No, I think it, yeah, it's all or none. Um, okay. I, I think doing it on one side is, is just kind of, that takes away the point of, um, of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments, commissioners? May I offer yes, a please. point to that? Yeah. A lot of times there it, there are homes that would have it on the left side, or these would be steps. Mm -hmm. So you would have two areas of access. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, this is a new build porch too. It's not. We're not talking about a historic porch. So sure. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, real quick on that, Christy. So when somebody kind of, if somebody else on the street looks at these houses, this is not by any means a historic house. Like they're the, I want to definitely commend the applicant and the homeowner that they're definitely doing their best to kind of bring it back. Yep. But this is not setting precedent for somebody else. No, this okay. is, no, this is a, a design that's specific to what's happening on this house. Um, and it's, and it's, it's up to you, you know, I mean, if you don't feel the walls right at all, you can ask them to remove the wall, or if you feel that based on historic precedent, uh, um, historic building precedent, like buildings originally built with porches with walls, 
that they need to tie into the house, then sure. Yeah, well, that's what I'm, I'm struggling with just like how much to ask for, because I definitely agree with what they're doing, but it and not that this is a lost cause for the historic district or anything like that as far as the house, but there is a lot on here that <laughs> I guess 2006 <laughs> was a crazy year or something for the HDC. I mean, it, it just it doesn't add up yes. to up, up to me with it. I mean, right. The conceptual design looks like Neapolitan ice cream. It, it's just really a weird. Yeah kind of thing. So again, want to commend the applicant and the owner to to realize that and bringing it back as best they can. But it's just I'm struggling with, OK, well, how far do you ask? Because it's we're putting brick on the front, but they already painted the brick on the back. And I, it, it's I don't know, just this little it's new yep. for me in, in my see, uh, seeing of these applications. And it feels as if they or it seems as if they are just trying to make it better right because if yeah, we go certainly. with a with a wraparound then certainly. i mean porches are supposed to be eight feet and they're right. not doing that either you know and so I, I i'm inclined to support them in trying to make it better because it was never what we would have blessed uh in the beginning and i think the applicant started off saying that so yeah, certainly um, yeah so the applicant wants to say something we will open up so that they can I just want to uh, thank you for opening. I just wanted to offer a little bit of um, perspective with regard to the, the walls and um, whether they connect back to the house and how you treat this porch. Uh, I will uh, reference uh, other examples in the neighborhood, which I do have in, in some of my pictures, especially for houses where the porches are, are significantly lower and um, open towards the grade, uh, particularly on the, uh, let's see, what is it? 24, no, 1914 Thomas. Um, a lot of times what you see on these lower porches is just brick piers uh, with the columns above uh, and it's open all around. Um, you know, the porches being this low to the ground. I mean, that's pretty much how people used it back then. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there for argument's sake. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Barth. We will reclose. Um, and to that point, I'd like to say that uh, new construction porches 6.14 um, design new porches to complement the size, proportion, placement, and rhythm of existing uh, historic porches within this context is one of our guidelines. Uh, yeah, and in and, and three. Uh, ensure that the new porch is compatible with the overall architectural vocabulary style of the new building. And so, um, to your point, Commissioner Muren, uh, they are there. 2006 was a crazy year, and they're working to. They're working with us. You know, they're working with the the house to make it better. So, in terms of taking it back to what it was, which it never was, I I'm inclined to say to applaud them for <laughs> what they are doing and, and accept it as it is. But that is that is my opinion. Um, any other commissioners have uh, strong feelings about this? If not, it would be, we should move on. We could debate this all day. All right, I'd like to make a motion. Please. And uh, Chris, I'm gonna leave out the part about the, um, the, connect, the brick connection of the porch to the house. If you want a friendly amendment, we'll, we'll just roll with it. I'd like to make an, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application. They approve the changes to the front porch and the covered entry as it meets our guidelines for addition 7.2. And I request the following changes. One, the porch material to be concrete. The brick to remain unpainted and staff to approve the base and cap detail on the porch columns. All right, so we have a motion made by Commissioner Henningsen. Anyone want to second that motion? Seconded by Commissioner Walker. Uh, any discussion of the motion? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. To give them the option of doing terracotta or some other material over the concrete since they're having trouble with the concrete cracking. I would say that too. A friendly amendment accepted. Porch material, terracotta, or concrete. 
Still good with it, Commissioner Walker? Okay. Any further discussion of the motion, Commissioner Mirren, or any others? Oh, all right. Uh, so why don't we take a vote? Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner, sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with everyone that's here. Pardon me. Uh, Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Mearn. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. That's all right. I didn't miss anyone. All right. So motion passes. 7 0. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barth. Next. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Um, the next application is 821 Woodruff Place. Shelly, are you with us? Shelly and Bree. Yes, this is Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Uh, uh, is Bree with you? I believe she's on, but I'm not sure she's going to speak. Okay, that's fine. Um, have you been sworn in? No. Okay, first step. All right, Shelly, if you'll raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, um, this next application is for some porch changes on a new infill construction single family house built in 2002. Just want to remind the commission that Shelly was here back in March. For a workshop to gauge the temperature of um, acceptability of this proposal. And based on the positive bent of the workshop, even though it is an unofficial review, she they decided to move forward. Um, if I recall, the direction of the commission was you've got to get the design right to do this, but we would entertain it. So that's what I recall from from that time. Um, I'm sure Shelly can probably speak to that in greater detail. And I'm at this point going to turn the project over to Shelly. Um, Shelly, please state your name and your address for the court reporter. And I am on slide four, which is the aerial uh, locator. Thank you. Uh, Shelly Hughes, 7421 Coors Drive, Charlotte, uh, sorry, uh, Arvada, Colorado, 80005. Um, I'm the designer on the project. And um, yes, we did uh, meet with the commission in the workshop portion. I believe it was back in March or April. Um, the consensus that I took away from that meeting was that we needed to retain the original porch elements, um, railings, columns, headers, uh, those types of things. Um, but they would entertain the idea of this enclosing part of this front porch. Um, because we're on the satellite view now, um, I'll point out that um, I think one of the comments that I saw in the staff analysis or whether or not we're meeting the guidelines was um, maybe trying to make an addition on the rear of the property, which is not really possible. As you can see, the back part of the property is pretty tight. It's just the driveway parking area and a small backyard. And also the rooms on the back of the house aren't where we needed the addition. Um, so. On the front of the house is a dining room and a living room. Um, my, uh, I guess, Christy, do you want to go to slide five and kind of show them some of the pictures of the porch and the house? Um, this is not an original historic structure. It's on the side of Woodruff that has all of the newer construction, which I'm um, sorry, I don't remember the year, but early 2000s, I believe, was when this was built. Uh, you might be, no, Christy, <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, 2002. Yes, so it's not an original historic structure. It's a newer structure in the historic district. Um, and it had a full front porch, but there are houses on the street um, and on the same side of the street that have partially enclosed or smaller front porches than what this has. And the client is asking if we can expand the room that's on the, the right hand side. When you're looking at the front of the house, there's two windows to the right of the front door and two windows to the left. And the two windows on the right of the living room, and we're trying to expand out into the porch space to expand our living room slightly um, and give them a little bit more usable heated space. Um, so going to the drawings, um, that's where you'll see comparison of the plans there with the original full front porch. 
And then to the right is the one with the addition. So in the, when we move to the elevations, um, in a second, I'll point this out, but on the floor plan, you'll notice we've got windows on the right side and the front side. And then we're proposing French doors facing from that addition out onto the original porch. Um, and the front door is right there adjacent to it. Um, so just wanted to familiarize you with that so that when we go to the elevations, I can point out a couple things there. So Chrissy, go to slide seven, please. Shelly, you are kind of dropping off and oh, sorry. Yeah, your your voice just kind of gets lower. And our court reporter is indicating she's having a hard time hearing you. Okay, let me see. If and I just can... slow down a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear better now? Yes, all good. Okay. I'll try and to speak louder. Okay, and what um, slide would you like? Uh slide seven. Okay. Um in case you missed it, all I was pointing out on the last one is that we are proposing a set of French doors coming off of the space onto the porch that's immediately adjacent to the front door as well. Um, so the top of the page is the original drawings. Um, the lower part of the page is the proposed drawings. Um, so we want to retain the original porch elements. So the columns, which have brick piers up to um, the railing, and then we would keep the railing. Nothing else changes on the exterior. We're keeping the roof lines. We're keeping everything. So all we're doing is infilling between the columns, adding windows and doors to enclose that space. We're actually even using the existing uh, porch floor. Um, we'll fur that up or build that up on the inside and insulate it and all of that stuff to meet code. So um, one of the comments that I saw from staff was that the windows might be undersized. Um, we're willing to adjust sizing on these, but um, I picked sizes that were stock sizes and allowing for some framing in between the columns and the windows and between the windows. Um, and as far as the header height, I'm trying to keep that in line with the existing windows, which is um, around eight feet. Um, the other thing we're proposing also is a new front door. The original front door was a six foot eight door. It's half glass um, with nine lights, which would not have been a historically approved door. So we're trying to propose a taller eight foot front door with three quarters glass with a panel at the bottom. Um, and I have some examples later in um, lower slides that um, will point out what we want this to maybe look like. Um, so as far as the windows go, we could go slightly wider on these, reduce some of the framing between the column and the windows and between the windows, um, but we're trying to stick with some stock sizes. We're also proposing a casement window versus the double hung windows that are on the rest of the house because it we want it to look like an enclosed porch or sunroom and not like the rest of the house. Um, we also have some examples of that and some later slides of other um, similar enclosed front porches. Um, and then there was also a comment that there might be too much siding on um, the inside of the porch at the French door. So if we go to slide number eight. You still hear me okay? We can, yes. Yes. Okay, so um, we're only proposing a six foot eight tall French door on the inside of the porch because we didn't want to compete with the hierarchy of the front door. But we would be willing to entertain putting a transom above this door um, or enlarging this door if you feel that they should match in height and stature there at the front door. Um, just keeping in mind that these are at a 90 degree angle from one another really close to each other. So we don't want, you know, guests coming to the home confused about which door they should be knocking on or ringing the doorbell at. So we were trying to keep the front door more prominent and keep the French doors a little bit smaller and less prominent. Um, I think that's pretty much my comments on the design, but if you'll go to the last slide, which is number 10, I believe. You'll see some of the examples that we pulled of other similar enclosed front porches where they've retained the columns and the railings. Um, and also in the bottom right corner, you'll see a couple of examples of front doors um, that are similar to what we want to propose for the new front door as well. Um, where any place that they're siding, we're going to match the existing. Um, we would like to also match um, window details as much as possible, or we'll go with the Sierra Pacific brand or equal to meet the HDC guidelines. So that's all I have. Any questions?
there's no one on the line to speak for or against the application. Okay. Uh, commissioners, questions? Generally speaking, Shelley, can we go to one of the pictures that has just the front elevation of the porch? I, I'm just a little confused about how the front railing and how the porch is enclosed with the front railing. I mean, can you explain that just in a little more detail? You might be able to see a little better on the floor plan on slide number six. Okay. Um, Chrissy, if you'll zoom in on that floor plan a bit more. Um, do you want the alternate plan? Which one do you want? There's that bottom two. one with the French doors. Okay. We pro we propose French doors or windows on that side facing the porch. Um, the client would prefer doors so that we can kind of allow their living space to expand onto the porch when they want. Um, but we weren't sure how the commission would feel about that with the doors being so close to the front door. Um, so we gave an alternate for windows in case you didn't accept the doors on that side. Um, but you'll see um, zoomed in on the plan here. We are building the new walls in between the columns and slightly behind the face of the columns. And, and also we'll need to wrap the columns on the inside of the room slightly to add some insulation and things to meet code. Um, but the railings would remain. So we would back the railings with, um, actually Christy, if you'll go to the section, which I believe is on the next slide. This also would also explain it a little bit better. Uh, sorry, next slide, slide eight. Um, actually, one more. There it is. <laughs> so, if you zoom in, um, in the notes there, what we would propose is backing the existing railing with something to close off the back side of it, and then we're building the wall right behind that as tight as we can get it. I see. So, using, so we're retaining. I'm sorry. You're Go using ahead. smooth hardy board. Yeah, to just fill to fill the, the gaps. Gap the yes, mm -hmm. so the pickets would remain, the railing would remain, every all the original elements would remain. We're going to just build tight to it on the back side. And and what's your current siding made out of now? Um, I believe it's a heart, hardy or some sort of composite. Um, honestly, I'm not sure, <laughs> but we would match that. Yeah. Any other okay. questions? Thank you. I, Shelley, I uh, have a comment actually, and I just want you to know that I'm going to bring this up in deliberation again. So I thought I'd give you the chance to speak to it. One of the things that we want to preserve in our historic neighborhoods um, is the pedestrian interest that a lot of these porches provide. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, well, they still have half of their porch, so it's not like it's completely gone. And then I drove down the street. There are 11 of these houses that were built around the same time. Mm -hmm. Only two have partial porches. 801, 805, 817, yours, 825, mm -hmm. 829, 901, 905, 909. They still have open porches. And for the two of the 11, they have a, a partial porch, 809 and 813, the windows that are used in those partial uh, enclosures are one over one double hungs, so the rhythm of the fenestration is maintained. Mm -hmm. This would be the first time, or the only one, uh, within the context of that streetscape that looks like this. So mm -hmm. that's a challenge. Can you speak to that, please? Well, I mean, if the commission feels that the double hung one over one, over one would be um more appropriate here, we're certainly willing to change. I proposed a different window here because we were trying to make it look like some of the historic examples, which we found that are on slide number 10. If you'll go back there, Christy, um, you'll notice on the examples that I pulled, a lot of these houses had double hung windows on the rest of the house, but when it came down to enclosing these porches, they used a different style of window. So we were kind of doing that too. Um, and again, if it were a historic house, I, I know you talked about it in the first presentation today that you want to see that differentiation between the old and the new. So I felt like proposing a different window here was appropriate um, and felt like that we had enough historic examples here to back up that um, they've used multiple styles and shapes of windows um, when they're enclosing these porches that are different from the main house. Sure. Our challenge is that those are uh, beautifully done, but they're not on the street where 
821 okay. Woodruff is. So we would be looking at the rhythm of that particular area. Mm -hmm. Well, we would be happy to change to a double hung if, if you feel that that's more appropriate. And that is what's on the house now. Okay. Um, and we were also just trying to maximize the 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 window openings and we're not going to get as much window opening with a double hung as we would with the casements. Sure, I understand. Okay. Well, thank so you we for speaking. Yeah, we just we want it to feel more like an enclosed porch um, than a room addition. Um, even though that's what we're trying to achieve ultimately for the interior needs for the homeowner. Um, so we were just trying to get this read to read a little differently than the rest of the house. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Shelley. All right, commissioners, any other questions of the applicant? Questions or comments before we close for deliberation? Going once. I have one more comment too. Um, I will note too that I know front porches are sacred in the historic districts, but I will note on this lot, they are pretty high up on the hill and pretty far off of the street. So you don't have that same communication from the front porch to the neighbors on the sidewalk that you do in some of the other parts of the historic district too. Okay. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any other? Yes, Commissioner yeah, just, uh, Kelly, uh, Apologies, one last question. You said yeah. that you're enlarging the size or the height of the front door and you had other pictures, maybe of other neighbors or something like that to just. Um, no, I actually didn't have any um, other similar case studies nearby. I just felt when you look at the current slide that's up, that front door looks really puny and undersized compared to where the window headers are on either side. Um, so I felt like increasing the size and height of this would um, give the store a little bit more hierarchy. Thank you. A little bit more presence. And, and, and just uh, to piggyback off of that, that was another question slash comment that I had. Thanks for bringing that up, PJ. 4.10, uh, number four, do not reduce or enlarge entrances or door openings. Um, Maybe I know you just addressed it. Do you want to say anything further about that? Because it will come up in deliberation. I guess my take on it is I feel like when these houses were originally designed, that that's probably not a doorway that you would approve now, even though it may have been approved back then. Um, I just felt like it was undersized and in proportion to everything else in the house and it needed to be enlarged just from a visual standpoint. Um, may, maybe you don't agree, but I feel like if you look at these two images, at the top and the bottom, um, you can see how small that front door looks. It's also not a historic uh, style of front door. So we were trying to bring back uh, another more similar historic element than than what's there. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we close for deliberation? Jim, why don't you lead us on this? Okay. One? Um, in in spending time on Woodruff, I came to all the same conclusions and all the same noted all the same ideas. The two existing half porches clearly were probably built at the time the house was built. There's no indication that there was ever a porch there in any way, shape, or form. Um, with that said, apparently we did give the impression that we would accept the idea of some type of an enclosure if it was done properly. And with that said, I'm inclined to say, okay, we, we will allow a, por a half porch on this building. The question is, is it this one or is it something that's slightly different? I do like the idea of doing it the way they're talking about doing it, leaving the railings and the columns and all that stuff there so that someday down the road, if somebody chose to go back to what was the original front porch, it would be relatively easily done. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I'm not an architect, so I'm not going to decide which windows ought to be appropriate, appropriate or whether or not the door sizes and that kind of stuff. That, that I, we have plenty of folks who have those ideas firmly in their grasp and uh, that that's where I'm at. I, I I think it can be we can allow it, but I think it needs to have some refinement and I want others to say what that refinement needs to be. Sure. I will say um, we all weren't in agreement with enclosing the porch and uh, there are a few of our architects who were 
not in agreement with closing the porch. Based on the rhythm of the streetscape, I am also not in agreement with closing the porch. I, um, yeah, well, I can appreciate the effort to maintain the character of the porch. Uh, I don't know how we can get around this guideline um, since, uh, of porches. It says do not enclose porches on a primary elevation. So I'm still really struggling with that. It's not a historic structure. It's not a historic structure, but we do look at the streetscape and there is a rhythm there. The streetscape is not historic. It's in a historic neighborhood. No, we got 12 or 15 houses in a row that were built in 2002 that all look the same and are not historic. And they sit farther back from the street than most of the other houses with a similar kind of character. You go to Wilmore, go to even in, in Wesley Heights, similar sized houses are a little closer to the street. The porches have a more, more of a relationship to the street than these do. They all sit high. Um, so I, I think some of the things that we typically would say want to pre be preserved with these types of porches don't really apply to this group of houses. We always, That's my feel. We always talk about rhythm and they do sit high, but they're like on a pedestal. So the porches are, are, are very visible from the street. And there is a rhythm and they are presented to us in a certain kind of way. PJ, you had something you wanted to say? I mean, ju just a comment. Uh, if I, and I, I may not have, I may not be remembering this correctly, but I think when we had the design review meeting, we, you know, we were definitely divided on whether or not enclosing half of the front porch should, should or shouldn't be done. And if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, we led to agreeing to enclose it, provided the design fit, because there was also a couple of houses that were in that cluster that were all built at the same time had half porches. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, if I'm if memory serves. Mm -hmm. So if since that was kind of our comments or agreement during that design session, I, I don't. I mean, should we be talking about whether or not we should allow to enclose half of the front porch? Well. It, so. it wasn't a continuation. It was a review yeah. and we all were not in agreement on it. Well, it, it's so it's a non binding review, right? And as we do with all of those, you know, we give the applicant direction, but they are still required to come back and provide um, their presentation for why their project meets the guidelines. So maybe you don't have quite the information that was provided during the workshop. I can't say. Um, but it's not out of what you have asked for in the past from other applicants that have attended the workshop because, you know, that was a workshop, high level, non binding feedback um, to help an applicant make a decision on a path forward. And then they're still expected to make the case during the actual hearing. Okay. Fair point taken. Thank you. Um, I would also just remind the commission that. You know, when it comes to these things, there has been a level of scrutiny given to the to Jim's point, the way things are enclosed. And there have been a couple of side porch projects recently that uh, the commission has reviewed. And um, if you want staff to, you know, research those and provide that information, we're glad to bring that back to the commission. Here lately, front porches have been a major topic and yes to your point Jim it was because of the pedestrian interest and because these houses are set back and up on top of a hill um and to the applicant's point you're you're not getting that same pedestrian interest but then I will defer to the rhythm and there is a certain kind of rhythm along with those 11 houses um that would at least with this design be disturbed Any other comments? Um, I think at this point, it's uh, we should float a motion and see where we we land. Anyone feel strongly about a motion? Putting one forth. I'll put forth 
put forth a motion to approve um, the the porch with the conditions that the design of the windows and doors and siding and details be be revisited. That sounds more like a not some continuous. I'm not comfortable as staff. Uh, Okay, looking at that, I, I understand. Just, I, I yeah. clearly understand that. Um, all right, I'll withdraw that um, the motion to approve and I'll make a motion to continue. Um, with the re condition that. The detailing for. Windows doors siding relationship to the railings uh, existing railings. Preservation of the existing railings and all that kind of stuff that they're talking about doing that that be done in a slightly more detailed form and fashion and that we were able to review uh, and understand better what they really want to do and. Having heard these conditions now, what what we would really like to see. Okay, motion made by commissioner Hayden. Do we have a 2nd? Can we get some guidelines? You can use your staff memo. All right, motion. Motion made by Commissioner Hayden. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made by Commissioner Hayden, seconded by Commissioner Henningsen. Further discussion of the motion? Uh, yeah, I want to have a little discussion. I mean, I mean, the applicant has provided a lot of detail. The application, I mean, it was using that smooth, hardy board as an example. Um, uh, what I mean, is there something more specific you're looking for? I mean, obviously, I, I get with, you know, not having the six, the six over sixes or you know, divided lights versus one over ones. I, I get the window aspect, but what else are you asking the applicant to come back with? Um, there were comments made about whether or not the siding was appropriate, whether or not there might need to be uh, transom over the French doors, or whether or not the French doors are really appropriate. I'd, I'd like I'd like others to help me figure out what what else we're looking for here. If if this if we're going to allow the porch, are we going to allow this porch, or do we want the porch to be refined? Okay, I, I would. Add uh, if you're voting to continue this application because you're considering enclosing the porch, they did say that they would be willing to do one over ones because there's nothing else on that in that streetscape that speaks to the language that they've put forth today, and they are at least open to doing the one over ones, which is what the two of the eleven houses have. Okay, we can say we want the. Do we want that? Is that what is that what we want? I'm not voting to enclose it, so I'm just throwing out some stuff that might be helpful. Okay. Please. Well, it, it seems at this juncture that it might be more fair for for the commission to determine whether or not, in fact, enclosing that porch would be something that, given, you know, all the dots are cro crossed and T's and all whatever, that 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 would be considered. Otherwise, it's a, a moot exercise on their part. I, I think that's the point of floating the motion, right? That was it's what just, I was trying to do. So, I, you know, I mean, I'm happy to withdraw the motion. Somebody can make a motion to withdraw, but to deny. You have a motion on the floor with a second. Um, 
if you would like to include as part of your motion that the applicant also needs to return with a better case for enclosure, you're, that's also at your disposal. Um, if you were, I think you have to make a motion to withdraw the motion with a second on the floor or vote. I'm looking at attorney Jill for Robert's rules help with um, substitute motions and motions with seconds. Can you? I think you have to go and proceed on the motion and take a vote on the motion. So why don't we do this, Jim? Why don't you uh, restate your motion? Since there was some discussion of it so that it's clearly stated for the record and then we'll take it from there. Okay, I make a motion to continue. With the conditions that the. Windows be restudied. That the French doors be restudied. That the details for relationships to siding and transoms and um, the amount of siding in relationship to the amount of open space or o openings for windows and doors be restudied. Um, and that's it. Uh, per, per guidelines, uh, whatever they were. 4.8. 4.8 and 7.2. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Hayden. Seconded by. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Henningsen. Uh, any further discussion of the motion before we vote? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. No. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Muren. No. Commissioner Parati. No. Motion to continue passes 4 3. All right. Thank you, Shelley. On to the next. One. Okay. Our next case is 400 East Worthington Avenue. And if you'll give me just a second to pull it up, Kevin, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear Hi, me? Kevin, yes. Um, have well, you been sworn in? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. The next application is for the new construction of a accessory dwelling unit and garage on a corner lot at 400 East Worthington Avenue. There is an existing curb cut and um, the overall height is 19 feet, three and a half inches. The lot topography slopes downward and it, so the garage is shorter than the house. Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin. Kevin, if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please. Yeah, my name's Kevin Shella. Um, I live at 400 East Worthington Avenue. And I am on slide five, which is your site plan. Existing, existing survey. Um, slide six is your proposed. So if you'd like to start somewhere else, I'm certainly glad to do so. No, that sounds great. Um, yeah, we're looking to uh, build a two story garage. Um, the second floor will serve as a home office. Uh, and um, um, yeah, we tried to match all of the architectural features of our existing house. Uh, we kept the windows the same size as the existing house. Um, like uh, Chrissy said, yeah, the the proposed garage is is shorter than the neighbor uh, behind us uh, on Euclid Avenue. 
Um, and yeah, we tried to replicate a lot of the similar garages that, uh, that we see um, behind historic homes near our house. Kevin, I have the elevations up. Would you like to walk through any new design decisions? Um, yeah, I can do that. So um, the front elevation, we tried to keep the uh, um, Sean's uh, lights um, to match the, uh, the front porch. Um, I'm open to suggestions uh, if, if anybody wanted them closer to the garage. Um, um, we are keeping the exposed rafter tails. Um, the uh, proposed uh, left side elevation will be uh, facing the, uh, the rear of our house um, with an entrance door uh, utilizing the existing um, port concrete that we have in our backyard. Um, and uh yeah the uh um, the dormers on each uh on the east and west sides will just provide additional clearance uh while still um staying below the uh, uh the uh, height restrictions um but um yeah that's 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 pretty much it i i'm I'm willing to field any questions or suggestions, um, but um, yeah, I just uh, um, yeah, I'd like to you know move forward with things. All right. Do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? We do. Okay. Um, Nancy, have you joined us? Yes, I'm here. Hi, welcome. Nancy, have you been sworn in? Yes, I have. Oh, perfect. Okay. If you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please, you may make any any comments you'd wish to make about the project. Sure. My name is Nancy, N-A-N-C-Y, Northcott, North like the direction, C-O-T-T. My husband, Mark West, and I own the property at 1915 Euclid Avenue. That's our home, and it also is directly adjacent to the rear yard of the Cella property that we're discussing at 400 East Worthington. We support their proposal to build a garage and a new driveway on their property, and here are our reasons. First, we like the design of the garage, and we like that there are no windows overlooking our property. We appreciate that. Second, we don't think that the, Mr. Cella is asking for very much, considering that he has a driveway cut currently that is not useful because it goes directly into the side of his house. My husband and I used to walk by there and look at that little hatch on the, in the foundation of the house and wonder at what went in there because it's far too small for a modern vehicle other than a motorcycle or maybe a Cooper Mini. So really all he's asking to do is relocate his driveway cut to somewhere where it's actually useful. And Third, we think that not letting him move his cut to a more useful spot is unfair when you consider several factors in the neighborhood. First, the property directly across Euclid from the Cella property, who ha which had a cut that led into the backyard and therefore would have been usable, was allowed to make a new cut further toward the back of the yard. Also, the house directly across Worthington from the Cella property has a driveway cut that opens onto Euclid and a garage that faces Euclid, and view of that is not blocked by a fence as would be the one the cellos are discussing. Also, the house on the east corner of Worthington, the southeast corner, has a driveway cut onto, I think it's Lennox, despite backing onto an open portion of an alleyway. They were allowed to make a driveway cut, and there are numerous houses along Worthington that have driveway cuts on Worthington, and a couple of them have garages that face Worthington. So it seems like in view of all that within the neighborhood, it would be only fair to allow Mr. Cella to do what he and his wife would like to do with their property. And I am speaking for myself and for my husband. So in conclusion, we support this proposal 
though we would also like to make sure that any modification to the existing fence meets current HDC guidelines. Thank That's you, all I have, Nancy. thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have anyone else on the line wishing to speak for or against? Um, I don't believe so. We had a David Murray signed up, but I don't know that he's joined us. David, are you with us? Okay. Okay. All right. Commissioners, Commissioner Walker, you're up. Okay. Um, I had a question. Did, was, is there an AC unit associated with this structure? Uh, there would be a split level uh, or split um, system. Um, that's a good point. Uh, it's not shown on the drawing. I'd be willing to put it um, wherever uh, it, it needs to be put. Yeah, I, the other question I have, maybe Christy, you can answer, is is what is the distinction between an accessory dwelling unit and what this is referred to, which is um, an accessory building? It's a zoning distinction based on um, use. It's not, it's not in our purview, basically. Um, we are looking at size, scale, massing, uh, orientation, and design of the structure. Um, we don't get into interior configuration. And if you're implying this because of setback, um, that would be worked out with Shad Spencer and Lisa McCarter in ZBA. Right, but we would concern ourselves with placement of absolutely HAC. Absolutely. And, and all the things I mentioned, orientation, location on the lot are all within your purview. Okay, thank you. And then the other question I have is, I, I was trying to find where I can see the, um, this particular accessory structure in relation to the, the house that, that's adjacent to it on Euclid. So slide 11. Yeah, that, that doesn't help me as much as I'd like it to. Right, normally it's it's set in on the entire street view which is slide 12, to sh so it's shown side by side with the relationship with all the houses on the street. But we have uh, limited information on slide 11. I have a, uh, is that is that typically something that um, Andy Zutwell uh, or his, your surveyor would um, put together? Mm -hmm. I have a .dwg file that I can provide. Right. We provide the PDF file and the DWG file, and it's your architect is the one that will manipulate the, the DWG is a CAD, AutoCAD file, and um, it's the applicant and architect who um, uses that file to place the new building in um, proportionally to the buildings that are surveyed by Zotwall. Okay, I got a little pushback from him on doing so, but I can definitely, um, you know, I can okay. definitely resubmit that. I mean, you get the the gist of, uh, um, you know, the height based off of what I previously submitted, but I have no problem uh, resubmitting if necessary. Thank you. Yeah, that would be helpful just to see the impact that would have on on that primary structure it's next to. That's it for me for now. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Mirren. Yeah, I had a quick question for the applicant or a couple of them. Um, first one was I, I noticed you were drawing a 2 and 12 on top. I was wondering if that's something that uh, for the slope of the roof, is that something that you uh, can see on like neighboring buildings or where did that kind of come from? That came that matches the existing structure. Your personal structure? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on slide 16, um, which it looks like I just answered my question from this picture too, so I apologize for that. No problem. Um, two and 12, but on the one with, uh, is slide 16, the one with the pad, is that pad roughly like the red outline is where you're showing the garage? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It, it's, it'll be, um, positioned 
right over top of that. That entire pad will be demolished. Um, so it, it's with the front of the pad, like closest to the street, kind of be at grade. I'm trying to figure out. It looks like you're where that red outline is. Um, you've got some topo involved, meaning that the back of your building is going to be subterranean. Um, that you're going to be below grade. Um, is there something to look at, or have you guys considered with the masonry that you have at the bottom? Um, it's not really that tall currently. Is that something that you're looking to kind of mitigate that, or is that something that you've been thinking about? Yeah, we, we would end up having to uh, dig that out um, and the uh, masonry um, foundation would match the existing structure. So when, when you dig it out, you're going to leave it out and regrade or are you going to be pushing the dirt back? Um, uh, I think we would be digging it out. The, the, our, our lot slopes significantly from front to rear um and and you can't see from the pictures but there there's a fairly significant um um slope e e existing slope um that we had planned on um trying to you know level somewhat of the backyard but the uh, or the rest of the backyard but the um, the top of the accessory uh, um, accessory building would uh, would be below uh, Nancy Northcutt, who just uh, who just spoke below her house. I know that's important to you to you all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then on you've got listed on your drawings composite siding, and I was was wondering if you could clarify that a little bit more, and then also what kind of window units you're looking at. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I I just caught that. It's we're planning on using uh, wood siding. I mean, um, or, or smooth hardy board, um, uh, and I can clean that up on the drawing as well. I didn't I didn't catch that um, from the architect. Okay, and then windows. You had some uh, selected we, for that. Yeah, so we were um, we actually have a carpenter who's planning to um, um, fabricate wood windows to match uh, the existing size. Okay. Cool. I'm good then. Commissioner Goodwin. Uh, yeah. In, in uh, regard to the question on the roof pitch, um, front elevation of your home, that roof pitch is clearly more than a 2 and 12. It looks to be more like a, a 4 or 6 and 12. And then also on a two and 12 roof, you would uh, not be able to use asphalt shingles um, unless you took other measures. But first, just wanted to confirm that the proposed pitch on the accessory building is up, is less than on the main house. Um, one sec, let me pull up. Uh... Slide 14 is up showing the front of the main house which I believe is what Commissioner Goodwin was referencing. So in 2017, I built a covered deck off the rear of the house. It was a uh, uh, certificate number 2017-00713. And it was at that time when the pitch of the roof was confirmed as uh, two and 12. So I, I, I'm fairly certain that, uh, that that's correct. Okay, so that applies to the covered uh, deck at the rear then, but not the, not the roof of the main house. No, no, it, 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 the, the pitch of the covered deck matches the pitch of the existing house. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's clearly more than a two and twelve. Okay, uh, so we just need to to check on that. Um, the accessory building is nineteen feet three and a half inches. Is that from grade? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, just challenges that will come up in deliberation that I'll bring up. 
Um, it's a two-story building that looks like a, a, a massive one-story structure. There's nothing that I'm seeing that uh, serves as a line of demarcation, so to speak, between the first floor and, and the second floor. Um, and another challenge I have uh, with the design of it, just so that you can speak to it, Kevin, is uh, the door on your left side elevation that is at the very edge um, uh, of the building itself. Um, one sec, let me... Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> These are definitely, um, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't catch that either. Um, the spacing will be uh, appropriate with, uh, you know, building. Sure. Well, we'll need to see that. And then on the proposed right side elevation, I know your neighbor is lucky not having any fenestration on that side, but, you know, typically we see something. Um, would you be open to... To, to to putting some windows there. I, I would be open to that. I did do that out of respect for the neighbors. Uh, uh, but if if that was going to be your suggestion, I mean, I, I, um... well, it, it for 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 us for me, it comes down to the rhythm of the fenestration along all. Uh, elevations of the building. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I just wanted you to be able to address these items. Um, and then the orientation of, of uh, the building. And I don't know, I'm sorry if you specified in your, uh, in, in your package why you're doing it that way. Uh, to well, allow. Let me say it again. Uh, uh, yeah, to allow for a uh, vehicle to be parked um, in front. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so to Commissioner Walker's point, it really helps when we see things in context to their surroundings. When we see these new buildings in context to their surroundings, so uh, that you know the buildings that are around this proposed accessory building would be helpful for us to see. Uh, you mean like photos of the surrounding? Uh, photos, you know, height, spacing, you know, drawings, things like that, just so that we have, you know, we judge a lot of things, Kevin, on context, and it's just very hard for us to judge the context because we haven't been given any. I uh, Yeah, I was under the impression that, uh, that you all you know, would visit the site. Um, I, I thought that's what. Yeah, and we do visit the sites, but visiting the sites and having elevations where we see the difference in height or we see the spacing or, you know, that's, it's helpful to have that on paper. Um, okay. And what was your name? Sorry. I'm Kim. Kim, Kim. Peretti. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Are you yeah. referencing the Zotwell survey? Because I'm, re I'm referencing the Zotwell survey. Yeah. Thanks, Apple. Christy. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, I guess just to clarify, um, so your uh, it seems like I need to have my architect just revise um, the streetscape drawing, um, and and you're also looking for actual photographs of the neighbors' houses? Well, more so the streetscape, just something to show us context. So does that well survey showing the streetscape, anything that will be impacted by your building is really helpful for us to see on paper as well as on site. So we do site visits, but we also need you to provide documentation um, that we can then you know, use as a, a, a jump off for discussion. Okay, I thought I, I'm sorry. I thought I had, I had done that, but uh, um, I don't. I don't mind uh, revising that. Um, is, is that something that the staff would be able to approve uh, if, if, or when I do provide? 
No, we need to see that as part of your. Your uh, application process as part of this process. We need to see that. Um, okay, yeah, I, I so I'm looking at uh, let me see. I'm looking at page 10 of 19. Um, that's 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 pretty much what uh, I mean. I know it's a, a little amateur, um, <laughs> but um, I, 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 I then we need something that's not <laughs> okay. okay, Kevin. Um, okay, um, okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments, commissioners? Before we close for deliberation. Going once, going twice. Commissioner Walker. Yeah, I just had one other question. I, I wondered where the design for the garage door, which is kind of important since it faces the street, where that came from in relation to the the house, you know, the architecture of the house. Um, it, it, it closely matched the front door of the existing house. Okay. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, I think it was on page 13 of 19. Oh, okay. So then are you talking about doing a door similar garage door similar to the one that's on that page? Yeah, similar to it. Yes. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I yeah looking... sorry. The architect, you know, you, CAD doesn't have, you know, to have, um, yeah, the, the PowerPoint slide that I put together for the architectural features, uh, you know, it complements his drawings that he put together. But yes, that's correct. That door is directly behind the house. It doesn't face the house. The garage door faces the street. No, the main garage door? Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, I was asking about the garage door. You know, the one that had the... Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Kevin, you want to say anything else or give yeah. us any other information before we close? Yeah, somebody mentioned the... Um, um, line of demarcation or the different i did yes yeah, yeah. so it, i mean is that um a two-story needs to read as a two-story um because right now the massing is a problem because it's a two-story but it looks like one massive one-story building okay so um as far as um um uh, as far as uh, uh showing that differentiation um what um uh, would like cedar shake or you or what are, i guess what is the recommendation so uh that is something uh, uh, fortunately for you and your architect to to decide we we are not uh able to design it for you and it's me for myself you don't want me to design it i can just tell you when you when you're there okay so talk to your architect talk to staff they're incredibly helpful were you able to sit down with them before the meeting i wasn't because of covid no sure or even you know a conversation with them over the phone uh or zoom call or i exchanged emails yeah Okay, so use them, Rel please, because this will make this process so much easier for you. Okay. All right, so we're going to close for deliberation. Commissioners. Yes, Commissioner Hennington. All right, I'm just going to rattle off a handful of things. It's again, I'm looking to use this to get conversation going. We can add, we can subtract, we can get to a motion. So, first and foremost is, uh, I, uh, restudy the massing, right? So the garage doesn't appear to be a one story building. It needs to read more like a one, like a true one or one and a half story structure that is secondary to the main structure. Uh, in addition, as part of restudying the massing, this is ensure that the, the first and the second story walls are not coplanar. Um, there's some other minor tweaks, uh, updating the door location on the left elevation. 
restudying of the fenestration on the right side, clarifying the roof pitch, um, restudying the roof pitch on the dormer, providing window and sill detail, specifying wood siding and wood and a wood garage door. Um, updating the Zetwell survey to show the garage and show pictures of the surrounding home in the immediate context. What else? PJ, you're the man, man. <laughs> That's it. That is it. I mean, we talked about orientation, but we'll see that uh, when it's compared to the, its surroundings. So I think that's it, PJ. Uh, Commissioner Muir. Yeah, I was just uh, definitely echoing what he's saying. I, I think the the roof. If you look at the what he's provided, the roof of the neighbors. It looks like it's at ten feet. So trying to maintain that ten foot roof line, and then um, with PJ talking about the second story not being coplanar with the first, trying to have a setback there. Um, I, a question for staff on the the roof. I know we we talked about the two and twelve not existing on the primary structure. What about uh, does this apply to like our three sixty? What we can find within that because it looks like from the image he provided of the neighbor's house that they've got a two and 12 on the backside um, that he can achieve with gaff uh, asphalt shingles. Um, so th the project that this most reminds me of is there was a very similar design proposed. Oh, I'm going to get the address wrong. It's on South Mint Street at the corner. Um, David Wales did it. It was, was it 1901? I'm looking at Jill thinking she's going to help me remember. It was at the corner of 1829 is across the street. So it might be 1901 and they were proposing something really similar and you y'all requested a major redesign um, with the two story elements and the, the dormers. Um, There has been some instances of allowing a two and twelve pitch, um, but typically it's paired with a different design of the dormers because here they're not true dormers; they're coplanar with the wall. They're just an extension of the wall and more of a roof feature than an actual dormer. Um, okay. it, does that answer your question? What well, could he get precedence though from like a neighbor's house? like in, in the two and no. the the way the guidelines read is that accessory structures need to reflect the architecture and design of the main house that it's serving okay. mm -hmm. all right and then one last question for staff too i mean so this is a garage and practic practicality standpoint they are drawn as 14 six clear when an average car is around 15 feet long so I mean, so that's a got a many, and then it doesn't <laughs> matter. Is that something that we can comment on, or is that? Um, I'm sure the applicant finds that comment helpful, but we don't really get into interior okay. arrangement. Um, cool. Why well, just? Yeah, it's a how, garage, but um, right. An average car can't fit in it, so. How it would impact is if you had an issue with the orientation. Um, you know, for example, a car coming in. The other way could definitely fit, um, but anyway, uh, that's up yep. to the, the applicant and the architect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, thanks, Commissioner Muir. And uh, I just I'm going to add a guideline to your list, Commissioner Henningsen, eight point nine number three. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, it sounds like <laughs> you kind of have a motion there. I do. I can help you find a guy a, a standard if yeah you want. Um, a standard for new construction. I at six dot x. It just helped me with the x part. All right, I'd like to make a motion to continue this application based on standard eight dot nine number three. The design of the accessory building or garage must have a compatible style to the main house. And standard six point five. Massing 6.5 uh, for new construction. Restudy the massing yeah. so that the garage does not appear to be one large one story building and needs two story building. 
You said one story. Right. I don't want the garage to read like a large one story building. Oh, I see. It needs to read like a one or a one and a half story structure that is secondary to the main house. In addition, the first and second story walls and walls of the dormer should not be coplanar. I have a, a standard for you for the roof pitch. It wasn't wasn't quite there yet. Oh, I thought you okay. Uh, but 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 we when can you get that. there, I'm ready. No, that's fine. No, we can we can go to roof pitch. So standard six point ten. Uh, you also got eight point nine number three. Yeah, he got that one. Six point uh not six. Thank you, Commissioner Mirren. Six point ten number three. For standard 6.10 number three for roof forms, mm -hmm. um, update the diagram with accurate roof pitch and restudy the roof pitch and the dormer. Um, the dormer also needs to connect below the ridge line. Um, also, I need a standard for fenestration. Okay, uh, that's 6.12. 6.12 per standard 6.12 for fenestration. Um, Restudy the fenestration on the right side, restudy the door location on the left elevation, and provide window and sill detail. Also, a standard for materials. 6.15. Okay. And per standard 6.15, specify wood siding and wood garage door. And finally, we need the Zetwell survey updated to show the garage and show pictures of the surrounding homes in the context. Not on the Zetwell, those are two separate things. So we need a, the Zetwell survey updated to show the to show the garage. In addition, it's one of the first or second pages in the application to show pictures of the surrounding homes in the immediate context. All right. Thanks, Commissioner Henningsen. Motion made by PJ, seconded by. Second. <laughs> you want to rock, paper, scissors for. Okay, Commissioner Goodwin, seconded by Commissioner Goodwin. All right, any discussion of the motion? Yes, Commissioner Walker. Oh, sorry, I just have two additional thoughts. And my concern is that the garage also is clearly secondary to its. The house neighboring it on Euclid Avenue. That's a fairly petite house there, so that's a concern for me. And then the garage doors, I'm not sure what this guideline 8.9 number six garage doors shall either be authentically separate single bay doors or designed to give the appearance of separate doors. So will this garage door fall within that? Guideline. If I may, yes, it's a single bay door. Okay. <laughs> okay, and to Commissioner Walker's point, uh, eight point nine number three, which uh, Commissioner Muir brought up, and 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 so did I, and so did you. It's included in eight point nine number three, where it says uh, any new outbuilding must be clearly secondary to the main structure on the site. Right, but it doesn't say it doesn't say secondary to the neighbor behind it. It doesn't. That's part of the um, rhythm, massing, streetscape orientation. That's what the Zotwell will tell you. Okay, okay. Commissioner Mirren. Sorry, sorry, never lowered it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, why don't we vote? Do I need to repeat it? Do you want me to repeat it from the top? Yes. Yeah? Yes, please. Okay. All right, starting from the top, I'd like to make a motion to continue this application based on standard 8.9 number three. The design must be must have a compatible style to the main house. Standard 6.5 massing, restudy the massing so that the garage does not appear to be a large one story building. It must read like a one or a one and a half story structure that is secondary to the main house. In addition, the first and second story walls 
and dormer should not be coplanar. Per standard 6.10 number three, update the diagram with accurate roof pitch, restudy the roof pitch and the pitch of the dormer, and the dormer must connect below the ridge line. Per standard 6.12 for fenestration, restudy the door location and the left elevation, restudy the fenestration in the windows or lack thereof on the right side, and provide window and sill detail. Per standard 6.15, specify wood siding and that the garage door is wood. Also, update the Zetwell survey to show the garage. Also, include pictures of the surrounding homes in the immediate context. All right, Commissioner Henningsen. Motion made by Commissioner Henningsen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Goodwin. All right. Any discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Mearn. Yes. Commissioner Parati, yes. Motion to continue passes 7 0. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, I have an announcement. Um, Commissioner Hinman is going to join the meeting now at 3 12 p.m. Um, I also have another announcement. Apparently, I've been going back and forth. There was a technology glitch with the waiver for 329 West Park. We're going to hear it after all, and that is next. So, Christy Bartel, are you with us? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Just yes, a moment. Okay. Um, I'm getting a flag. Oh, yes. That, oh, sorry. That Commissioner Henningsen needs to recuse, and some other commissioners need a, a moment. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> five to ten minute break then. Let's Perfect. make it ten. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Excuse me.
Hi, is everybody back? Commissioners. Let me double check with Candace, but I think we're going to get started. Christy Bartell, are you with us? Well, paging Christy Bartell. Christy, are you with us? I am. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christy, have you been sworn in? I don't think so. No, I have not. Okay. If you don't know, then we're, you haven't. So we'll start there. All right. Christy, if you'll uh, raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, this next application is at 329 West Park Avenue, and it is an application for window replacement. And again, for purposes of the court reporter, I just want to mention that Commissioner Henningsen has recused and Commissioner Hinman has joined the meeting. Um, the memo outlines the details of the project and the applicant has provided a uh, color coded uh, Pre-construction images, as well as pictures of the windows proposed for replacement. This house had an addition that was approved by the commission, uh, and I believe it's done. But I will let the I'll turn it over to the applicant and let her talk to you more about the details of her project. So, with this, Christy, if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, and I am on slide five. If you want to start elsewhere, just let me know. Okay, so my name is Christy Bartell and I live at 329 West Park Avenue, Charlotte, zip 28203. And starting here, um, basically this is pre-renovation. So the home was renovated, it was completed this year um, in 2021. And with this renovation, if we go to the next slide, um, are you able to go to the next slide? Okay, there you go. So it's color coded. Initially, you see the orange. Those are the original windows. Um, and if you look at the top, this is during renovation and the front six windows were replaced. And it was a misunderstanding by um, because those windows weren't specified to be replaced in the report, even though the report had new windows. It didn't specify those. They initially replaced the windows um, and the picture is just showing it was, it's very difficult to tell the difference between the two. Um, but because those windows weren't specified to be replaced, the old windows had to be put back in. So further down to the right, now that the house is repainted in the gray, you see that the old windows were put back in. Um, so when the old windows were put back in since it was brought to our attention that we didn't get permission to replace those windows. Um, we actually had someone from uh, Kelsey Glass to come in. And if you go to the next slide, um, so this is, during renovation, um, and if you see to the left, it's just showing that the traditional hardware on the original windows, actually some of it was replaced anyway, but uh, the windows are older. They were in the home since the original build, and they basically don't work. Um, the sashes aren't operable. Some of them have dry rotted. Um, also, the alignment, the glass, um, because of like temperature changes, the glass doesn't really meet into the sash as well. Um, so you have open air. So definitely there's a draft. It's not um, energy efficient at all. And it's difficult to actually, well, I say difficult. We had someone from Kelsey Glass to come. And basically, he said that they really can't be repaired because you have to repair all the parts of the windows. So essentially you have new windows. Um, if you could go to the next slide. 
um, this is just showing the window to the left was placed when it was renovated initially in 2005 before the neighborhood was historic. Um, and that window has since been replaced, but that was approved. Um, the, the picture in the middle just shows um, pretty much the damage of the windows and showing that um, the windows aren't operable and you still get, um, when it's cold outside, you feel the draft. Um, it's definitely difficult to keep the house cool in the summertime in the front of the house. And if you go to the next slide. And the next one. Yes. So this is just showing the windows, how you have open space between the windows. Um, also the original, you see that they are the original windows, but they don't work. Um, and since then that piece of, you know, you see that the glass is broken. Um, and the next slide. If we could go to the next slide, do you see it? Okay. So yes. I, this slide that we were on slide 10, here's slide 11, and here's slide 12. Perfect. And then you also see the muttons in the windows. You see the separation from the glass. Um, and the guy from Kelsey Glass just explained that because of the temperature change, the the space between the glass and the muttons, it changes. So you're basically open to the element. And the next slide you see where some of the material is missing um, and some of it is dry rotted. And on the next slide, I'm sorry, I keep saying next because for whatever reason, the one I have is numbered different. Yes, you have the report from Kel I keep saying Kelsey, but Karsty Glass, where they came out and said that the windows weren't really repairable. And next slide. Um, this is just another picture, just showing that now that the house is renovated, um, that the, these, um, it's just comparing the windows that have, that are brand new. Um, versus needs to be replaced. And you truly don't really see a difference um, between the brand new windows and the older windows. Um, it's the same material, they're wooden windows, they aren't vinyl. And the very last slide, not the last one, but the next one. Um, this is again showing the renovations. It's showing the original windows um, the windows from 2005 and the brand new windows that were just replaced in 2020, just to demonstrate that you don't appreciate a difference. They still appear to all be the same windows. Um, you don't realize that the older windows are in such damage until you walk up closer um, and it is in a different design. And the very last slide is just showing that all the windows, because there is a misunderstanding with the builder, um, they are already purchased and ready to go in. Um, it's a total of 15 windows, three are sets of triplets um, and another single window. And then there are five smaller windows that are now, um, they're not operable, they can't open. Um, they aren't made to open, but the replacements will have the ability to open even though they appear to be the same. And that's about it. Any questions or anything else I need to cover? Sure, thanks Ms. Bartel. First, let's find out if there's anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application. So it's unclear, no one has signed up in advance to speak, but we have two unknown callers um, on the phone line. If you are calling into the meeting, would you just let us know if you are calling in for this application or not? 
Anyone on the no uh, application? Okay, thank you. Um, other caller. I'm going to take that as a no. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, well, as commissioners ask uh, questions now, Ms. Bartell, I'll start by just asking the pictures that you've taken or that someone has taken of these windows, were they taken before or after the windows were uh, put back in? So starting off, so the initial windows, it depends on the picture. So the windows that are up close, where you see the details, that's when the windows were put back in. Okay, all right, thank you. That's what I needed. Um, commissioners, other commissioners, any questions of Ms. Bartell? Sure, yeah. uh, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. So you had 14 windows replaced in 2005 before Wilmar was a historic district, and you've got 15 new windows ready to install. Are these all, this, are these all wood windows of the same make? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Walker. Yeah, do you by any chance have any more specs on those windows so that we could um, get the details of them? Let's see. Um, let me look and see in my builder app if I could pull up the information. I'll look right now. I have a builder app and they have all the information that was purchased. So I'll look and see if I can find it really quick. Give me two minutes. Are there any other questions while she does that? Is there any place that the framing is going to need to be replaced on your house? No. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I would be able to get to it really quick, um, but I'm not finding the information. Christy, this is uh, Commissioner Peretti. We um, just so you can address this now before we close. The um, the the standard that you have to meet for having your original windows replaced is very high. Um, I know you spoke to Carsey Glass, but did you also speak to um, or? Uh, address your win the the challenge with your windows with let's say double hung or a company known for the restoration of historic windows. No, I did not. Okay, um, that will come up. Just just letting you know. Okay. And the other right. thing I want to add, and this happened since I presented this. Um, the issues with the windows, the other issue is just safety because the, the sashes have dry rotted some and the way the glass meets the wood. Um, now I have a broken window. Sometimes kids don't listen. I told my kids not to touch the windows um, because I know they weren't safe. Um, they didn't listen, my 13 year old. So now I have a broken glass. Thankfully, he was not cut. There was no injury, injury, anything like that. But pretty much, they are. You can't manipulate the windows at all. Sure. Yeah. Just throw that in there. Okay. Yeah, I, I have another question. Did were all these windows purchased at the same time? When you say all, do you mean the the ones that the need 15, to be the yeah the fifteen remaining were they purchased? Yes. So they were purchased back years ago. No, 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 no. They were the home was just renovated in 2020. They were purchased in 2020. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Commissioner Goodwin. 
but they're the same make window as the ones that were that were put in um in 2005 is that correct well there yeah well i say the same make that's what i was told by my builder um but i didn't purchase the ones in 2005 because the home was renovated i purchased the home in 2007 so the home was renovated in 2005 and i purchased in 2007 and the windows from 2005 um the windows from two, when that when the home was re renovated in 2005 of course that was prior to being a story so specific i'm not sure to be honest with you i know my builder said that they are the similar look but i'm not sure about specific details of the windows from 2005. okay thank you Okay, um, anything else you want to say, Ms. Bartell, before we close? Um, no, that's it. I think the biggest thing also is you don't, just to add, you don't appreciate a difference when you're looking um, from the street, a difference. They are all wood windows and that's it. Just a lot okay. more efficient and safer. Okay, thank you so much. All right, we will close for deliberation now. Um, Jill, why don't you take the lead on this one? So I feel that this, the, there's, we, we definitely need specifications on these 15 windows to, to really make any headway here. And I, I also have some concern about the actual honest to goodness need for replacement rather than repair. I don't feel that I have enough information to make that call. Um, okay. So, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, anyone else have an opposing view, additional thoughts uh, that they want to express outside of the ones Commissioner Walker already expressed? Commissioner Mirren. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner or with Jill, but um, I think we need to have something in there about getting double hung or a professional to look at this. I understand that the glass company looked at it, but after looking at their website, I mean, they're just cutting glass. Um, so I don't think they've, I think they bit off a little bit too much than they could chew um, in the report. I uh, understand where they're coming from, but I, I think that's outside the depths of what they did. I mean, I think what's going in there is what we approved in the 2020 renovation in the blue. So I don't think that those are bad windows. Um, judging by the pictures though, we might need to have a conversation or next retreat about the kind of glass that's going in there because that glass looks really green um, as iron. That just, there's a ton of iron in there to get that green tint. And that's gonna be something that, you know, in the future, if we're gonna be fighting with that. So that might be something down the road, but, um, I think after double hung or somebody that's does this for a living can say that these are bad and to Jill's point, uh, you know, burden of proof that they're these things are in beyond disrepair. Um, I don't see anything that um, they aren't beyond saving right now. Thank you for that, Commissioner Muren. I think that's great to add. So, uh, you want to try your hand at a motion? Yeah, sure. Um, I would like to make a motion to continue this application so that the homeowner is able to provide specifications on these 15 remaining windows that have been purchased and likewise the homeowner to provide evidence that these windows are not able to be repaired by reaching out to a company that right by reaching out to staff for for reference of a company to do that judgment call okay all right thank you commissioner walker motion made by commissioner walker seconded by second commissioner hayden all right any discussion of the motion all right let's vote commissioner walker commissioner walker yes. we're voting yes, yes. <laughs> commissioner hayden yes commissioner goodwin yes Commissioner Bonaparte? Yes. Commissioner Heinemann? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. 
Oh, sorry, Commissioner Muren. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Muren. Motion to continue passes 7 0. Thank you, Ms. Bartel. All right, next. Okay, our next application, we're moving on to our new applications um, for tonight. We are starting with 1401 The Plaza, and we are also <laughs> welcoming PJ Henningsen back at 343. Um, there, there has been neighbor opposition to 1401 the plaza and so in as outlined in the staff memo if a neighbor objects then the hdc shall hear the application for a full hearing and so that's what we're going to do today with this application um i'm going to ask the applicants sarah pinto and jeff haskell are you with us yes yes yeah. Hi, we welcome. Have y'all been sworn in? I have not. Okay. And I have. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. If you will raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, perfect. Thank you. Oops. This project is located at the, corner of the plaza and Hammerton place and the request is for a 1 story garage that faces the alley and makes use of the alley. Um, staff feels that it, it's, it meets the guidelines, which is why I was on the consent agenda. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to turn it over to Sarah and Jeff to make a presentation about about the project. And uh, then we'll go through our standard process. So, Sarah and Jeff, if you would both state your names and addresses for the court reporter. And I am on slide four, the site plan, as a starting point for you. Sure. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. This, yep, this is Sarah Kinto, and I live at 1401 The Plaza, and um, I'm really looking forward to. Um, this potential project, and we'll turn it over to Jeff, the architect, who can speak a little more eloquently to its design and everything than I can. So there you go, Jeff. Hi, and I'm Jeff Haskell, 2341 Laburnum Avenue. Um, first of all, thank you, Christy, for putting this together and your proposal and, and um, uh, written information at the beginning provides a really good synopsis for what we're trying to do. I think this will be a pretty brief presentation and I think a fairly straightforward proposal. Uh, we're looking at the existing site plan here. Um, uh, the large chunk of uh, uh, concrete that you kind of see in the backyard that will be coming out. So one of the goals of this project is to really, you know, make better use of the backyard, turn it from a driveway slash parking area into a lawn in an area that Sarah and her, her family can use a little bit better. And if you'll go to the next slide, I can look at talk about the new site plan. And so here's what we're proposing. It's a simple two story, excuse me, two car garage. Uh, we're pushing it to the back left corner as far as we can. Um, there you can see to the right where we've got lawn instead of instead of concrete, which I think is is going to be great. Um, that's about it on that one. If you want to go to the next one, Christy. This is a floor plan. Uh, we're proposing to pull into the garage off the alley, you know, so we've got the 16 foot garage door there. We've got a walk through door at the right rear corner windows on the right and rear side. We do not have windows on the left side. That side is going to be up against uh, or facing the neighbor's garage, which is also, which is in the back rear corner of their lot. Um, I think we can go to the elevations now. So here you can see the neighbor facing elevation, as I mentioned, and then the alley facing elevation will, we're proposing a, a garage door that's segmented. So it looks as if it's two garage doors, the materials are essentially matching the house. 
uh, German wood siding with five inch exposure. Um, the door and window trim would also match uh, brick foundation brackets to match the house. And I think we can go to the next one. And then here you can kind of see the, the elevation facing hammers in place with the windows, the walkthrough door, and the lower elevation is facing the house. On the right in the upper drawing, you can see the house height is about 23 feet, where it's 16 feet foot one inch. Um, so much shorter than the house. The Pintos did consider a two story garage, but with the house being a one story, that was difficult to make work. So we've sort of dialed that back to a one story garage only. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, Christy, if you could go back to that uh, proposed site plan again. I neglected to mention we are, thank you, we're pushing to the, the lower left corner as much as we can. We are one foot back from the existing house line there with the deck. You can kind of see that 12 inch dimension. So we're we're probably between 30 and 45 feet from the Hammerton place from the street. Um, and we are back from our house edge. So this would not be visible from the plaza, obviously. And we're setting it as far back from Hammerton as we can. Um, and we are also back from the neighbor's house behind us. I think in the original slide that shows the front elevation of the house and the the Polaris shot, you can kind of see that we're well back from, thank you. You can kind of see we're well back in that corner from where the neighbor behind us is located. Um, that is really about all I've got. Sarah, did I miss anything that you can think of? No, I don't think so. That covered it nicely. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Well, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? Yes, um, we had someone signed up to speak. Warren, are you with us? Are you one of our unknown callers? I am here. Thank you. Hi, Warren. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate have you that. been sworn in? I have not. Okay, we're going to do that first. Okay, Warren, if you will, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Warren, if you would just state your name and your address for the court reporter, yeah. I'm going to pull up the information that you provided in the agenda supplement. Warren? Yes. So my name is Warren Stein Muller at 1408 Thomas Avenue. And I am the uh, rear neighbor of this project. Um, I think it's a great looking project. It's a great improvement, but I have some concerns of its effect on me. Uh, I guess I need a little guidance. Um, I have some thoughts about. Uh, and in general, in terms of the historic district, is that appropriate or not for me to comment on? Um, we would ask that you would limit your comments to the design of their structure and how it meets or does not meet the design guidelines mm -hmm. um, and how it does or does not fit in with the Plaza Midwood Historic District. Okay, so I've lived in Plaza Midwood since uh, early 1997, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, I got notice about this last week um, and have really not had, well, basically I've had a chance to do, I, I walked the entire historic district and, um, you know, it's not unheard of for there to be a garage that opens into the alleyway, but of the, I don't know how many houses in the historic district, I could find just two. Um, and they had further setbacks than this one. It seems like the consensus in terms of access to garages is from the street. You know, so two out of um, I don't know, hundred plus houses have have, have a structure at the rear, um, and those also have uh, the, the 
the lots behind them are are shielded by uh, various uh, fences and trees and things like that. So there's not an exposure the way that there is here. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, placement of this particular garage, my lot is the land slopes down to, to, towards my yard. So while it's a 16 foot elevation for them, it's closer to a 20 to 21 foot elevation for me. In addition, you can see in this picture, um, the garage will go, will, first of all, that structure to the left is not a garage, it's a shed. Um, and so their garage is gonna be not too distant from them. So it's gonna stretch from just a foot or so, a couple of feet from that garage. It will disappear off the right edge of my picture. So it'll completely fill up that space at the back of my yard. Um, I'm concerned that with the uh, drainage, I already have drainage into my yard. Um, and with, the, uh, with that becoming impermeable and rain running off that roof uphill will increase the amount of drainage coming down into my yard. Um, uh, additionally, the lighting of the garage uh, can potentially pose a problem in terms of lighting up the back of my house, which is uh, stretched, which has glass windows across the back. When the house was renovated uh, some years ago, um, I had to talk with the owner about lighting that they had put uh, that it currently exists to make sure it was down going because when the lights were turned on, it would light up the entire back inside of the back of my house. Um, uh, a third concern is that the way it's configured, uh, it's an oversized garage. Um, it, it's quite large. Um, it uh, spans by, by 75% the width of my house. Um, the, and uh, it spans almost the entire width of the back of their house. And the way it's set up crane-like, it gives a, an overall large mass effect, which, I, which is not consistent with how uh, uh, um, uh, accessory buildings are, are arranged in this neighborhood, uh, almost exclusively the uh, uh, auxiliary buildings are offset from the house. Uh, in fact, this house before it was renovated had a garage, um, and that garage was at the corner of Hamilton and the alley. Uh, that was torn down during the renovation, and that renovation extended the porch out and the extent that uh, structure that was the bathroom, which is the left part of the house was extended out. So the original house was set further back. Um, I, I really am pleased with the idea that they're removing the concrete and putting in barns. I think that's great, but, I, but the location of the garage is uh, of concern to me. Um, additionally, you know, cars are at minimum 15 feet SUVs even larger. I don't think that uh, I'm concerned that they will not be able to uh, enter or leave that garage without having to drive across the property line into my yard. Um, so I have that concern as well. Um, in looking at the um, uh, the uh, historic district guidelines, all of the diagrams that I could show with auxiliary. Um, uh, uh, buildings show an offset. Um, and so in section 8, um, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8 8.8, 8 8.9, all show garages offset, not in a train like fashion. This house couldn't be, the garage couldn't be any closer to the house uh, uh, before it actually became detached. And the only thing separating it from the house is a condenser unit for the air conditioning system. So everything is jammed into that corner, giving it, I think, an oversized effect uh, for the neighborhood. Um, uh, the, 
the other thing is that you know the representation of alleyways in this historic district you know it looks um uh they don't really reflect the, the facts on the ground in terms of the nature of the uh, alleyways um very few of them are passable um uh, the alleyway that's shown um, across the street across hammerton really do doesn't even exist anymore um, uh, so i i think it from my sense, it's really not consistent with the way auxiliary uh, buildings, in particular garages, are uh, built in uh, in Plaza Midwood Historic District in general, and particularly in within the immediate uh, immediate block and blocks of this particular area. Um, so I'm looking for, I guess, some type of accommodation, some type of way of working this so that they get their garage and uh, and also doesn't impinge on, on me. The other thing is, as you can see, uh, um, uh, that right rear of my yard is really the only place that I'm able to do any gardening um, because of the tree canopy. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm limited to that. 20 by five or six foot space um, and the placement of the garage there is going to uh, create uh, uh, added shadow and really make that place uh, unusable uh, for me. Plus, as I said, it looks to me and people I've talked with that given the size of vehicles and the uh, placement of the garage and the width of the alley that they would have to cross over into my, my yard to get in and out. Um, if, if it's there, um, you know, in order to provide some screening for myself and, and some, um, I guess, sense of privacy, not having cars driving up and down behind my house, lights coming in from the house. I'd probably have to put up some type of fence, which I prefer not to do, but I think that would leave them completely unable to use their garage because they, I don't think a car can make that turn without hitting fence uh, uh, on this side of the property line. Um, you know, it, it, it's, so those are, those are my, those are my concerns. Um, uh, again, the, propor the, the proportionate size, its particular location, it's, uh, you can see it will completely dominate uh, the, the back of my house as it will expand even beyond the right edge of that, uh, of that uh, the picture that I show you. Um, uh, my, my thought, I'll share my thought um, uh, for, for what it is. Uh, the placement of the garage that was originally there, the right-hand corner, uh, or corner of Hammerton and uh, the plaza, um, fit very well on that space. Um, it uh, left a more open feeling. It would allow for better drainage uh, uh, so that I have, I, I'm not impacted by water drainage coming off the roof and potentially into my, into my yard. Uh, it would allow, um, would maintain a, uh, a very nice garden space for them uh, while providing less, uh, uh, minimizing the impingement on me and also would give them better access to their garage than they would have at this point. Again, I, I think that it's a nice design, but I think it's not going to be usable. Those are my thoughts. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Warren. Um, there, are could I, could two, I... there are still two unknown callers. I'm sorry. Um, caller, any unknown callers wanting to speak for this application? If not, that's fine. Just could you just speak up and tell us no? No. Thank you. <laughs> no, not for me. 
Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, well, then we'll let the applicants respond. Christy, would you mind going back to the Polaris diagram? I, I just wanted to point out. Yeah, um, Mr. Steinmuller's lot is the second lot in behind our property or behind the Pinto's property. And I wanted to pin point out that, you know, the property line, the Pinto's property line is more than halfway back from his, it, it's not, their, their, their property line, the Pinto's property line doesn't, only a very small part of their property sort of overlaps with Mr. Steinmuller's. And additionally, the garage being four feet in from the property line and then the driveway being another four feet in from that, that's another eight feet in from that property line. So in terms of some of the issues that were brought up, most of this structure is not gonna be behind, you know, Mr. Steinmuller's property. Um, secondly, if we were to move the garage closer to Hammerton, I think we would get into trouble with some of the other guidelines, as well as making the backyard really unusable for the Pintos. Um, we would be sort of, uh, you know, making the back corner there unusable and, and hard to get to. So I just wanted to point out those, those couple of things. Sarah may have some other um, items that I missed. Um. Well, I just want to recognize that um, I think that Warren does have a valid concern about uh, crossing over into his property for entering and exiting. And I just wanted to um, make it very clear that I would want to work closely with Warren to figure out a solution to that, because that's not an outcome that I would like to see happen. That's not fair to Warren. And um, we would just want to make sure that uh, whatever entry and exit concerns he has, we make sure nothing crosses over into his property or, or causes any issues there. All right, thank you, Sarah. Okay, uh, any other questions, commissioners um, of the applicant? Before we close for deliberation. I, I do have a quick question um, and it, it's the sec second application we've seen where the door seems to be right there on the edge. Um, let me find the, I'm looking at A5. Slide number eight. Is, is that what you meant to do? We'd be happy to slide that in, you know, some dimension to to so that those trims don't intersect that that's fine. Okay, thank you so much. All right, any other questions commissioners? Oh, yes. I have just 1. Okay, uh, we're. You commissioner Hayden, uh, the, and then you commissioner good one. Um, and my question relates to the photograph that the, uh, the, the Warren submitted. The fence that's shown is is that. You're all's fence or is that his fence? That is my fence for 1401 okay. the plaza. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, and getting back to the cars entering in and out of the garage, do we feel confident that there's enough um, turning room there that the cars can negotiate getting in and out of the alley uh, without traversing the property line? Uh, well, I think as, as Warren appropriately pointed out, uh, with a really big car, um, I, I cannot imagine it. We live in a more urban environment and thus drive smaller cars. This is not a garage that's designed for large vehicles and, and the neighborhood really wouldn't support that. So um, it, there will be restrictions on the size of car that can fit in there and appropriately the, the car that could make that alley turn. We've tested our cars in empty parking spaces just to make sure that it's possible with the cars that we drive and it is possible. And part of the design as well, you know, with the single garage door that's made to look like two doors, you know, the garage itself will also be used as part of the turnaround space. And, and but this particular garage, you know, we've got good width and we've got good depth and we've got that double door. So, you know, we don't intend to, you know, 
use any more space than than the property or the alley directly behind um, the Pinto's house, and and we feel that's very doable with this garage configuration. Um, this is Christy. I just want to remind the commission that that's not really our purview. So, um, you know, commend the applicants for wanting to work with their neighbors. It, it, it would be considered a civil issue. Thank you. All right, and then uh, one more question for Mr. Haskell and Ms. Pinto. Uh, it says that on your in your application that the fence is going to stay. Is the gate that's right off of Hammerton in place now? Is that also staying? No, the intent there. I, go ahead, sir. Oh yeah, uh, the intent there is that that will be removed, so there's enhanced privacy for our backyard. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, if there are no further questions, we'll close for deliberation. Do you have a question for the applicant? Okay, we will close for deliberation. Commissioner Henningsen. No, I mean, I, I just want to say, I mean, here acknowledge and understand Mr. Steinmuller's concerns on use of how the alleys are used and lighting and potential wide turning radius of SUVs and large vehicles, but you know, unfortunately, it's not part of the commission's purview to to weigh in on those things. Uh, based on the application, um, the size, the placement, the design of the garage is not incongruous with with Plaza Midwood in the immediate context. Um, it meets our standards for accessory buildings, standards 8.9, and for new construction, Chapter Six. So, I would make to, would would like to make a motion to approve this application. Because it meets our standards for accessory buildings, um, standard 8.9 and new construction, standard 6, but, but with the following change on the Harmonton Place elevation, adjust the location of that door just so it's moved a little bit, so it's moved away from the back corner of the building. And do we want to uh, just put in writing because it's not on the application that the gate will be removed? I mean, it's, it's staff approvable. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, motion made by Commissioner Henningsen. Do we have Thank a you. second? Uh, who was that? No, oh, Commissioner Bonaparte. <laughs> yes. Uh, hold on. I, I do want to discuss my own motion for a second. Thinking about it, if it would save the applicant some paperwork mm -hmm. and staff some time, then should we include removing of the the gate on that side fence? Would that help, Christy? Okay. Okay. All right. So motion made by Commissioner Henningsen, seconded by Commissioner Bonaparte. Sorry, Commissioner Hayden. <laughs> um, any discussion, further discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Oh, Commissioner Heinemann. I would just love to go on record that I think that Mr. Haskell's point about the double garage door and the extra space on the sides of the garage and the dimension is very well taken given the constraints on this lot and the concerns about the neighbor. I think um, it's it's a very insightful point and, uh, and we should go on the record about it. That's it. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Heinemann. All right. Commissioners, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodman. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Heinemann. Yes. Commissioner Mjern. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you so much, Mr. Haskell and Ms. Pinto. All right. On to the next one. Hey, okay. our next application is for. 2001 the plaza christopher are you with us chris chris elon are you with us we do not see him and according to candace he is not on right now Okay, I would say we move on to 1316 and then come back. It is consent agenda. Do you want to just do it? Okay. We do not. All right. Well, then, since we have no one okay. to speak for or against, let me just pull it up. Just, just give me one second. 
and just so we have the the project explained for the record. So the project is 2001 The Plaza. It is changing a door to a window. It's on the second level that exits out onto a, a space over the carport. Uh, right here, there's no way that you drop down an entire story. Right. <laughs> um, looking at the design of it, it it's I really strongly believe that it was originally a window. The applicant is suggesting they're doing some work on the interior and to the rear of the house that staff is reviewing. They're going to take an original window from the back and relocate it here. Any brick that they're taking from the back, they're going to use brick from the house to patch in. Um, the only reason it's not staff approved is visibility. So it's here before you for your consideration. And we do not have anyone to speak for or against it. Correct. Okay. Commissioners, any objections to keeping this on the consent agenda list? Nope. Okay. Well, let's uh, Kim, I'm, I'm recused. I don't, I don't know if I'm recused from this. Oh, thank you, Chris Mern. I forgot to, t I had that note in front of me and I forgot. Yes, would the That's record cool. reflect that um, Chris Mern is recused? Thank you, Commissioner Muren. Okay, so motion. I would yep. like to make a motion to approve as it meets the guidelines for Windows 14.14. Motion made by Commissioner Hayden, seconded with the quickness by Commissioner Walker. Discussion of the motion. All right, Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte? Commissioner yes. Bonaparte? Okay. Commissioner Hindman? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and we should note for the record that uh, Commissioner Mern is rejoining the meeting at 4 15. For the next case, which is also a consent agenda item, this is 1316 Thomas Avenue. Um, we've looked at this project a couple of times. It, it's a it's different for the commission because it's a commercial project, and commercial projects have to go through commercial review. And sometimes during commercial review, things come up, um, and what has come up has been an issue with the allowable uh, window openings on the right elevation i'm going to show you slide three so they thought they could do 15 percent window openings on this right elevation because there was an alley separation that provided additional separation to the building next door how the commercial reviewers interpreted that is that they could not use the entire width of the alley they could only measure from the center line of the alley um, for purposes of calculations. I do not understand. That is the determination that was made. So for those purposes, they had presented it to us. They thought they were good with 15% openings, um, but they've come to find that they can only have 10%. And how the fire code reads, because I asked, is I said, well, what about um, false windows? We do that a lot. We have a window and then you close it in so it's just from the outside. How are the fire code reads is that the assemblage, the wall assemblage has to be unbroken from the floor to the to the ceiling on the exterior and on the exterior is the key. So they can't have a window blocked in on the interior because that would still leave an opening on the exterior. So I worked really closely um, with the architects, Angie Lauer and Alan Brooks and the property owner on how we could come to a solution that kept the spirit of the approved right elevation from September, October to, hold on, I'm gonna pull up slide five. So um, approved in October, 2020, is at the bottom and it shows you know three windows in the center of feature 
that matches the design of the left elevation. It also shows a pair of windows at the back here. And given the, the reduction from 15% to 10%, they had to lose some windows, make it smaller in this area. My solution is was the solution that we've done many times before on feature areas, add some shutters to take up the wall space, not uncommon for Victorian architecture. The other change is the win these win four windows in the front got a little smaller. They're slightly shorter. So instead of being eight foot tall, they're they're seven feet tall. Um, those are the changes given the visibility, given that this is the gateway into the district, the visibility of this elevation, I felt it was staff overreach to approve this without bringing it to you. So I'm bringing it to you as a consent item, but I also completely understand if this is something that you need more information from the architect who, can, who I'm sure can explain the fire code much better than I attempted to just now. So um, that's the project and that's why it's back before you. And Kim, back to you. All right, so do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? We do. We have um, Natasha, who we spoke to at the beginning. Sure. Is on the line. So help me out then, Christy. If we have someone who wants to speak for or against, does that kick it off the consent agenda list? It typically does. We do not um, know what she's going to say I, yet. We don't know if she's in opposition. But, um, okay. So, but I think we should do what we always do. Mm -hmm. If there's a neighbor wishing to speak, mm -hmm. let's take it off the consent agenda. Okay. okay, why don't we do that? Since we have Natasha on the line who wants to speak, let's kick this off the consent agenda list and hear it as a regular, a regular case. Okay. okay, great. Um, Angie and Alan, are you with us? Or Angie? Hey, I'm here. Hi, Angie. Is hey. Alan, is Alan or Andrew with you? No, just uh, Andrew was in a meeting, so it's just me. Okay, great. Well, have you been sworn in? No, not yet. Okay, you know the drill. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Welcome back, Angie. <laughs> hey. please, raise, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Thank Angie, you. I've already explained the project. If you would state your name and your address for the court reporter and fix anything I might have misstated or um, clarify, add to. Sure. You wish. So, Angie Lauer, ALB Design, 901 Berry Hill Road, Suite B1, Charlotte 28208. And Christy, you had absolutely everything correct. Um, so, just a 30 second history. We had gone through HDC approval back in October. It took us a while because this is a commercial project to get through um, permitting and plan review um, code enforcement. And in the process, um, it had been returned to us for the fenestration based on table 706, I believe it is. Um, it's noted in the documents. Um, for the amount of openings um, or penetrations in a rated wall. So if this was not as close as it was to the alley, we could have done the openings that we had. But because this one particular wall in the entire building has to be a rated, one hour rated wall, we had to change the glass openings or the openings in this um, on the right elevation. So working real closely with Christy, we did determine that the front third of the building, which you can see, by just reducing the, the windows um, by a foot in height, not in width, allowed us to gain some um, additional um, um, wall space that we needed. Also, too, the windows, the two small windows in the center section, um, which are at the stairs. So you can see in this presentation, which is on slide five, um, where you can see the stairs that cut through. So we, we had to place windows appropriately. And then in the rear third of this, we had to reduce 
the, the pair of windows over um, the walkway to one window. Other than that, the bay with the shutters, the proportions, everything pretty much stayed the same. Um, there wasn't too much compromise to this elevation. So that pretty much sums it up. I mean, Christy hit it right. The amount of openings is really dictated by the code. And when we did this presentation in October, we had not gone through permitting and that's where it was held up. So we're in the, in the holding stages um, for permitting until we get zoning approval, which is held up by um, the certificate of appropriateness. So that's it. Thanks, Angie. Uh, now let's hear from Natasha. Natasha, if you would state your name and address for the court reporter, and then you may address the commission and the applicant. But before you do that, Natasha, have you been sworn in? I have not. Okay. Oh, she, she's been on from the beginning. Well, My bad. I'm yes, so sorry. I have. <laughs> Please, raise hours, your, whatever, yes. Please uh, raise your right hand, Natasha, and to respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and the information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. <laughs> Natasha, if you would just speak as loud as possible. You are coming through very quietly on our end. And if you would state your name and address for the court reporter, I'm going to turn it over to you. Absolutely. It's Natasha Maximovich. Um, and I am having technical difficulty. So can you hear me okay? You are fading in and out. So the closer you get to your speaker, I think maybe the better. Okay. How about now? Oh, much better. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what information did you want from me? Your name and your address. Yes, Natasha Maximovich, 1611 Central Avenue. Um, sorry, there's such a bad echo. I can only hear myself talking. Let me so, turn this down. Yeah, turn down the volume to the meeting. Yes, let me try that. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, so my apologies. Address is 1611 Central Avenue, number 408, right there adjacent to the property. Okay, and what what are your questions or what are your concerns about the application? Uh, my apologies. My concerns, I just received this information the other day, and I've been trying to get a hold of this city in regards to that easement any of these windows or openings, currently we have a situation with the garbage, um, the, the placement of the garbage location. The trucks that go in and out require usage of the current empty lot prior to the construction. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if they are not permitted proper access down this easement to arrive at the location of the dumpsters, anything of those windows that are open or placed, this uh, truck will not have access to the dumpsters. As of right now, they cannot access that easement, that alleyway to arrive to the dumpsters. So my concern is that is this easement is going to yet become narrower than it already is. My only concern was regarding the opening of those windows or how are they going to get in and out of that easement? Sure. Without providing okay. damage to any of the two properties. Oh, I see. So um, I think that question would be better addressed to the commercial reviewers, the commercial permit reviewers. Um, we, our purview doesn't extend to, um, you know, at trash access and, and those sorts of easements Our our decision making and review is solely limited to the design of the building itself. Okay. Uh, and again, my apologies, since I just received this information the other day. Do the plans propose to come into the easement in any fashion? 
Um, we, I, I can't answer that. Um, we, we can look into it and certainly work with the architect and the property owner. Um, but for purposes of today, our review is solely limited to the, um, the design of the right elevation. And I think my question does fall into that in the sense that depending how far out that extends from the actual physical structure. You mean, are you talking about, I'm circling right here. Are you talking about the, the bay window? Uh, well, I'm, I'm noticing the location for today's proposal. The, uh, I'm looking at the plans right now for the, the window become closer and the panel that goes below it. Right here, see what I'm saying? Yes, right here? exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. The, um, I'm going to turn that over to Angie. I think that's also been a, this panel here is a screening panel, um, screening mechanical units. Perhaps I think that was okay. also a requirement from the commercial reviewers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, it is Angie, if I respond and thank you, Natasha, for your questions and your concern. Um, I can answer the question about the alley. Um, the entire alley will be accessible and it was um, intended that way so that you would have access or that you would have um, uh, vehicular access to the back of your building. So that's number one. Number two, um, the bay window, the bay at the second floor will not breach the property line in any way, no, nor will the screen for the electrical meters. Okay. Um, so those meters are behind the screen on the bottom right hand corner. Christy, if you could on slide five, circle that, that screen wall right there. So as you can see in the October meeting, that's where our panel was going or mm -hmm. um, in the service, but by code, building code and the electrical code requires us to protect with bollards and to screen that service so that it can't be damaged by vehicular traffic. Okay, so that, that was exactly answering my question because I'm having spoken with for parcel delivery of any kind, whether Amazon, UPS, et cetera, et cetera, they require the existing empty lot to turn around in we have a low hanging garage entrance, so they cannot go in and they have to back out directly into the proposed construction lot. Okay. So that was my concern that if anything protrudes beyond a certain spec, it will get damaged, especially with the, um, my apologies for the lack of a better terminology, but the, the, the individual that comes in and dumps the garbage in the back there on the property. He has indicated to me during our conversation that he will have to back out and right on to Thomas Street, which is just off the corner from Central. So, and as of right now, he is brushing all the shrubbery on the side. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you that the egress and the exit um, I mean, the entry and the exit to this particular building um, does meet the DOT standards for width of drive and access. Okay. So, and that we are working very closely with the planning department right now um, in its final stages. So once this process gets approved with the fenestration patterns, then um, we should be ready to go. So if you do have any concerns, um, again, as Christy mentioned, as far as the site plan, um, we can reach out to planning as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think that you guys have addressed that and all of that has been taken into consideration. And I just would hate to have construction begin and then all of a sudden this is realized that there's potential damage existing to the structure due to these unforeseen um, circumstances of the garbage dumping. Sorry for lack of a better term. Well, thank you for your question and your concern. Um, I would hope that the owner, and I'll speak on behalf of the owner in this regard, that we've done, you know, a lot of study on parking and entry and access and 
pavement, paved areas, um, as, along with Christie on the location of the building, um, you know, where the mechanical units are gonna go, the screening, all of this has been vetted out already. So thank you though. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha. Commissioners, do, uh, does anyone have any questions for Angie? Questions or comments before we close for deliberation? Commissioner Mearn. Yeah, quick question. Um, so were you guys looking at um, pursue, is this a non-sprinkled building? And so you were looking at a setback from five to 10 feet? Is that what the building code came back with? Um, so no, Chris, this actually, uh, first of all, yes, it's non-sprinklered. Um, and it sits one foot from the property line on the right-hand side. So therefore, um, the entire right-hand wall needs to be one hour rated. Okay, I gotcha. Yes. And did you look at the possibility of, instead of this being an Audi, since this kind of the dormer condition um, is what threw you over, uh, at possibly bringing that into the building? So it's it's not a uh, co-planar, but it, it gets you to the point so we don't have to sacrifice any glazing? Um, actually, it has really nothing to do with its protrusion. It had okay. to do with the square footage of glass. And if you read that chart, we were at 159 point something square feet. I can't read it on there, so Christy, if you can zoom in. So we are permitted by code 152.9 square feet of openings, whether it's vented openings or glass. And we are now down to 151.5. And that's based on 10% of the overall surface area of 1,529 square feet. Right. Well, I was, I was looking at table 7058 that you're calling out and trying to figure out where you guys fit in this because to get 10%, it's you're from a five to 10 foot uh -huh, yeah. separation distance. So, um, thank you for asking that. So we were allowed to use 50% of the alley that gave us. Oh, okay. So originally we were told by the building department when we had this, I guess it was February of. 2019 that we could use the entire alley which gave us 15 percent of penetrations but yes yeah, so you're uh, at a 10 to 15 feet back from uh, the i got gotcha. you so we can only use 50 percent of the alley um regardless of the distance of the building to our right um so we can only i mean it, it reduced it to 10 percent instead of 15 percent yep that's why working with them is so much fun in the code office. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. I'd rather work with the historic commission. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. I see Jessica's face. I know you guys can't see me, but I'm smiling. So. <laughs> And then one last one last question that did you guys look at sprinkling the building that would get you to the 25% or is that something that um, with clearances and I, I know you guys we talked originally a while ago um, about the heights and the clear the uh, clear area in it if that was a no go. Uh, Chris, that was not an option. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Aaron. All right, any other questions for Angie before we close? All right, let's close. PJ? I mean, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application. It's not incongruous with the district, meets our standards for addition 7.2 and for new construction standard number six. All right. Second. So, motion made by Commissioner Henningsen, seconded by Commissioner Hayden. Any discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Heinemann. Yes. Commissioner Muirn. No. Nope. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion passes 7-1. All right. We are now moving on. Yes.
Okay. So let the record show that Commissioner Henningsen is recusing from number nine and number 10. All right. Um, the next application is 320 West Kingston. I'm looking for Harold, Jordan, Carrie, and Mark. Are you guys with us? Are you? Yes. Is that Harold? Yes, it is. This is Harold. Hi, Hi Harold. How are you doing is, today? I'm great. Are, is Carrie and Mark joining you? They should be on the call. Um, Carrie, okay. I see her. They're on us here. now. Okay. Are they on number nine? Oh, I'm here. Hi, Carrie. This is it. Hi, Carrie. I can hear you. You're just not quite loud enough. Hi, sorry. We weren't saying we were talking to each other. We weren't talking to you. Oh, but okay. Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> I always get nervous when people do that. <laughs> yeah. um, I have have y'all been sworn in? We have not. Okay. Okay, Carrie and Mark, if you will, please Harold. raise and huh? Her Harold too. Thank you. And Harold. I've been on here since y'all started. <laughs> All right. So, Carrie and Mark, if you will, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. I feel like we're getting married again here. Like, what is going on? I, there might be a bit of a delay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so this application was continued from the July 14th meeting. Uh, the applicants took their time and took into consideration the eight reasons for continuance in their revised project. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it straight over to Carrie, Mark, and Harold to walk the commission through the changes to the project and um, answer any questions the commission might have. So I'm going to start you out on, let's see here. Page eight, which is the site plan. If you want to start somewhere else, just let me know. Oh, and if you would state your names and your addresses for the court reporter, please. Okay. Well, this is Harold Jordan. Um, address is 4919 Albemarle Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. Zip is 28205. Hi, this is Carrie Cook Wilson and Mark Wilson. Our address is 1023 Margaret Brown Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28202. And we are grateful. It looks like maybe um, everything, I hope we're not on a delay, but we're just wanting to say thank you and we're grateful for the opportunity to come back and share this project. We did take into consideration all of the feedback from the last meeting and had an additional meeting with the HDC staff. And so we'll we'll turn it over to Harold um, and uh, let him rock and roll with the presentation here. Okay, um, we're gonna just start off with the site plan. When we last had the, um, at our last one back in July, um, staff had brought concerns about the site, since we're looking at the site, wanted us to be able to provide screening for the um, condensing units to be able to screen them away from the front of the street. And as you can see, we did provide some shrubbery to be in the front of the units facing um, Kingston. So we did provide that. We made, um, and as you can see too, we made changes to the addition of the home as well. We kind of went out a little more making it more of a ranch style. If you can just go to slide, the second slide actually. The next slide, okay. If you're looking at this slide here, we basically keeping the front of the house as is. Staff did request for us to remove the center column at the porch. We did remove that as well, but we're keeping the front almost 90% as is. We just raising the roof up probably like um one foot, 
kind of trying to zoom into it so I can make sure I'm quoting this right. We're raising the roof up one foot two inches. Um, the H, the commission um, expressed that the tallest building height on that particular street, which in the 360 degree radius, was at 26 feet and some inches. Right now, our house will be set at 26 feet even at the top of the ridge line. Um, you go to the next slide, and as you can see, before you go to the next slide, we did remove that column in the middle. But we just, so if you go to the next slide, just to get in a little bit more about the addition of the home, staff expressed about the house being too massive at the last um, meeting. As you can see, we scaled it down, got more of a um, more of a smaller scale design, where we um getting two rooms on the second floor. We're using the existing window to your left, and then we're just making the the rear addition of the home to be looking like the front side, the left side of the home. Actually, then we're just popping the dormer in in the middle as well as a dormer in the rear to be able to give the second floor balcony above with a covered patio below. Where well, the new addition, we're showing um, a siding, which we're gonna use the HDC commission approved Michi high siding color to be selected by the owner. We're keeping the existing brick on the home, but the, um, that was brought up um, that the owner will be meeting with um, someone out there in the later um, as far as like probably doing some kind of either cleaning, staining, something just to be able to keep the brick in that historical look because we are, was brought to the attention that we cannot paint the existing brick. Um, with the addition, we did set it back so you could be able to see the difference from the new versus the old. Um, the house is set back probably about six inches. Um, from the, the new addition is going to be set back in six inches away from the, the new, I mean, the existing addition. And we actually, the staff was talking about the rhythm of the windows. And as you can see, we got all our windows that's on the second floor as well as the first floor in the same rhythm as far as heights, except for the one at the dormer. But the one at the dormer is actually at the same height as all the windows. It's just a smaller window due to it being a dormer just to be able to provide some natural light coming into the home. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at making sure I'm covering everything. Um, staff did raise a concern about the existing trees on the lot, but with us adding this new addition, we're still not removing any trees on the existing site. And then they did bring a question about the, the new garage that we, we tear down the existing garage and building a new garage. But if you get to the last slide, not the last slide, if you get to slide number 14, we're showing the new garage where we're going to be doing some grading a little bit to cut it down. But the new garage is only sitting up um, 20. The new garage is with well, the new garage is sitting not over 20 feet high off the ground. It's gonna have a loft on the top floor, and we're just adding some dormers on the um on the garage as well, just to be able to get a second floor on the um top of the garage. Um Staff did break concerns about the roof, so we are showing all roofs to be at a, at a 612 pitch, or better yet, just to match the exist, existing roof of what the house is now. So we did cover that with this um, new addition, as well as the garage in the rear. Um, I already talked about the site plan, so I'm pretty much we covered everything that staff did, but we did redesign it because staff did recommend us trying to do more of a ranch style home. And then they were saying if we do go to the second floor, the second floor can only be covered with knee walls, not full second story walls. So with that rear 
um, elevation right here, we're just really covering, being able to get that height to get to the porch by using a dormer. Hello, can y'all still hear me? Yes, we're oh, listening. Okay, because it was so quiet, I, I sorry. <laughs> You're making a great case, that's why. <laughs> okay, and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we covered everything from one through seven because staff didn't really want to review the accessory building at the time because we had they had so many concerns with their um, existing home, but we went on and made all the changes to the existing home as well as you know adding the addition per what staff was requesting, and then we still put the accessory building on there, the two car garage with the loft above. I think that's about it that I have so far. Terry okay. and Mark, if y'all wanted to input anything. Uh, no, I think you covered the seven points that were outstanding from the previous meeting. And so we just really wanted to make sure that this design was going to be, you know, true to the history and the character of the home and the style of the home. And as opposed to it having a two story wall, try to accomplish still adding some additional living space for our kids, but, but um, having it have more of the double A frame on the side that you see and having the um, home give us some more space in the back. It does not interrupt with any of the existing tree canopy as Harold mentioned. So we still have those trees, which we love in the back. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to take advantage of the deep lot. So the impervious calc is not an issue as far as um, the amount of space that's going back and the amount of space and, and green space that we'll still have in the backyard um, at, behind the, the property. So we're excited about this design and looking forward to your, your comments and your feedback. And um, as Harold mentioned, the the maintaining the integrity of the existing home and showing the dif differentiation between the existing home and the new addition has been something we really strive for with this after several iterations to try to try to get something something right well thank you so much miss cook uh christy do we have anyone on the line looking to speak for or against this application no okay um, so it's our time to to talk uh, or ask and or ask questions. And I just like to start by saying thank you so much. Thank you for listening to our notes. Thank you for reaching out to staff and working with them to um, make your application. And just this one commissioner's uh, opinion comes so far. There are details that we need to discuss, but thank you so much um, for making the best use of your and our time. I have questions about the, the windows and the shed dormers. They seem to be sitting like right there at the um, on the roof line. So could could you speak to that, please? Will you speak to that, please? Can you repeat the question one more sure. time? I'm sorry. Sh sure. So there are windows uh, in the shed dormer that are right there at the uh, at the roof line. Right. That right there is just a tight um, detail, but I'm going to have to raise that window probably just up another three to four inches just to be able to get the trim around it, like the window to the left where we got the new windows. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Just a minor detail. Barry, um, there was another question that I had. Uh, the the columns the porch columns uh they tend to be more craftsman than tudor can you speak to that please i was basically um we drove through the neighborhood and was just looking at um homes in the neighborhood and i remember when um it was two different columns that was suggested one was tudor and one was um Ooh, I can't even think the name of the other one. The other one, was it Craftsman? It wasn't Craftsman. It was um, Cottage yeah, English. English Cottage. Okay. English Cottage. And most of the columns I saw looked like this one right here, especially from the picture I showed on um, my detail sheet on sheet 15. But that 
Just so that you know, Harold, we would be looking for columns that are more in the language of this, the house, which is tutor. Tutor. Mm -hmm. so, when, so like, yes, let sir. me ask this question. Cause when I was looking at the tutor columns, the one tutor columns that I kept um, doing research on was the double like tutor column. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be, uh, again, without designing it, it is, we, since the house, uh, the style, the architectural style of the house is tutor, we'd be looking for columns that match, that speak that language. Okay. Well, that's okay. an easy, that's a real easy change we can make because. Um, that's two easy ones so far. Let's see what yeah. the other commissioners have to say, okay? Okay. All right. Commissioners, questions, comments for the applicants? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. <laughs> yeah, thank you for all, all the improvements. You've changed the policy aspects of this home and improved them. Um, based on the comments from the, the July meeting, I did want to ask about a couple of things that I did not see. I, I did not see an impervious area calculation. Just want to make sure because you are there's a lot of impervious area in the rear. I did see some some square footages, but I didn't see an actual calculation. Oh, okay. So I, I, I actually do show that calculation on the site on the site plan. Okay. Um up in the top, kind of top right corner, right beside the tree. I got a bunch of calculations right there where the hand is at. I'm showing my building area with my concrete, leaving 5,467 square feet of grass area. Yeah, I saw I saw those numbers, and we need to work from the you know rear thermal wall of the of the original house, and then figure out the impervious area behind that, and then come up with a percentage. Um, hopefully, you'd be okay, but I'm, I'm just not sure by um, looking at it. Just to make sure that we cover in that percentage area for R5 zone for the, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And um, also, did you, you said you're, you're, you're keeping all the trees. I didn't see a tree uh, protection plan. Is that something you're working on? Yeah, that will be showed on the site plan before the, the construction starts. Um, really will be done by the civil engineer, but I can go on and place it on there just for y'all or your eyes. Free protection. Okay, and the, yeah, and then one other thing too that was brought up from the comments in the last meeting is ridge vent details. I didn't see that on the latest presentation. And yeah, we okay. we using a ridge vent that's um who I gotta bring using the Soft. What are you saying, Harold? We can't. I can't understand. I'm, 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 I just okay. got a brain fart on the type of vent, but it's more of a perforated um edge vent for the type of um. Oh. So we're gonna meet all the roof ventilation requirements, but. Well, I think the just real quick, I made that comment last go around. The bigger question was what the material was for the roofing. And then that vent, the detail in the vent was being shown as as a, a thickness to the roof membrane, like what the exterior material was. So we were just looking for uh, clarification if it's an asphalt shingle or whatnot, because I saw architectural shingles called out on several of your uh, elevations. Then on sheet number 12, you're still calling a comp shingle roof out. It's, so it's going to be all architecture. Where we were looking. It's going to be all architectural um, shingles. It's not a composition. It's just all the architectural shingles. Uh, um, is that a material? What is the material? It's the asphalt. It's the asphalt architectural shingle. Just the okay. regular shingle that's on the house now. That That was the point of clarification we were looking at with the details because the architectural shingle that there's more than one type but just trying to get the asphalt if that's what it's going to be and then the the detail was more the minutia of showing uh, a different um 
material on the roof than what an, an uh, a typical shingle would show. So that's where we were. That's why the question was asked last go around. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Phil. Oh, no problem. That clarified it because I saw the composition um, element as well and was wondering what that was. So we're looking at uh, asphalt architectural shingles. That's good. Um, I had I had one more um, one more comment, and that is on the, both the right and left elevations. We have two fairly prominent gables that are coming together and almost meeting, with another roof that comes down from that from that dormer. Um, and I'm not sure how to handle this, but it's almost like you're creating a funnel there, and um, I'm not quite sure how to resolve that, but. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of water collected there, and um, and then you have a window directly below it. So that's just something to to consider as as, as you move forward. We could we can just put a roof, yeah, put a roof gutter right there to be able to collect the water when it comes down on that edge. We could be able to tie both of those lines again and just catch it with a, a nice gutter right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Heinemann. Hi, thanks. I, I would love to echo what my colleagues have said uh, about the responsiveness of this, uh, of these changes to the, the last meeting. Thank you so much. Um, I think my first comment, and I'm just going to stay on this slide, which is slide 10 for me. And Christy, if you can zoom out just a little bit, my first comment has to do, I will say my, a minor comment further on my list is on the existing and the proposed of the window on the upper level on the brick, it looks like it's changed locations. I think that might just be something that got shifted. It's, it's an existing window to remain. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I, we just need to just correct. I think it's probably just something that got shifted in CAD. The the question I have about this, and this may be a graphic representation question, is if I'm looking at this side elevation, what it appears is that the historic gable is to remain, and then it's sort of being copied back further on the house. And I feel like that's a great development for this project. And then in between those two is a roof that is somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 and 12, starting out at the edges of the house and going towards the center which then becomes just barely higher than the front gable, which we've seen before in the historic districts and tends to be pretty unnoticeable. But Christy, if you can go back to the front elevation, which is my slide nine, um, the way that would graphically look in the front is actually not that the entire gable is being raised. It would actually just be a peak in the middle. That's if correct. That, if that makes sense. And so I think the graphic representation is a little bit different, but Christy, if you can go back to slide 10 for me, what happens is this back roof over the balcony is, is a different pitch than that middle roof. And so those two, when they intersect on top of this gable that we're looking at, there's some sort of a transition in the slope of the roof that's not being resolved. And, and I think that's something that just needs to be worked out, both graphically in the front elevation and how that transition is happening. Um, Christy, if you can go to the back elevation. That is my slide 11. I think actually, if you, if the same pitch that is being used at the center of the house were repeated on the back of the house, that would that would resolve that problem in a, in a really simple and, and clean way. It could even come all the way down to the edges to, to have a gable that's more consistent with the rest of the house um, and would be pretty clean. The other question I have, if you can go back to the side elevation, which is my slide 10 again, yeah. has to do with what Phil brought up, and I'll just echo what he said. This is a great deal of roof area that's coming down right on that center window on, on both sides of the house. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I just am very concerned ab about that. Um, and certainly um, a gutter um, or, or a scupper in that location um, could do it, but it, it could probably also make the argument for sliding the new rear gable a little further back to get a little bit more length for that gutter to collect the water coming off of that very large roof area. Um, the, I, I actually had a different take on the craftsman 
columns on the front. I do think in our districts, there are some examples of craftsman tutor cottages. They are fewer and further between, but I think they can be done really, really nicely. And um, I think if you could just bring us a precedent photo of one of those, um, it probably would be pretty straightforward and I'm sure that staff can help you with that. But there are a few really nice um, homes that are, you know, brick with this Tudor gable in the front with with a craftsman column. And I understand you're working with your existing peers on the front there. And I think that, you know, what you're suggesting in your front elevation on these columns probably can be done really nicely. But um, but since it's fewer and far between and further between in the districts, we probably need staff to help you. Uh, get a photo of one of those as a precedent in order to approve it. Um, those are my major notes. I had a couple of notes about the garage, the coplanar dormers on the garage, and in those dormers needing needing some fenestration in those dormers. But I think those are secondary notes to the main house, which again I think is you know nicely responsive to our last meeting. Thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner Heinemann. Commissioner Hayden. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm wondering whether or not. I'm, I'm either not seeing it correctly or whether it may not be shown the way we want it to be shown. And that is the rear addition. Um, it appears in the rear elevations that that elevation is coplanar with the existing house. Different materials, but coplanar. And I'm wondering, is that, would we not prefer that to be slightly stepped in just so that the demarcation differentiation line is a little more prevalent than just the material change. Um, and then there also the uh, dormer that attaches to the uh, rear level porch and, and the patio, that wall appears to be coplanar with the lower level of the first floor as well. So it would seem as if that we'd want that dormer to kind of slide back a bit as well. And those same things apply to the dormers that show currently on the accessory structure. I'm not sure whether we're looking at that today or not, but that those same comments apply there, that the dormers are coplanar. Yeah, we do wanna um, give comments about the accessory building, so. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Hayden. Commissioner Commissioner Walker, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted clarification. Um, the house's elevation on page 12 is 725.9, and on page 13 it is 725.2. Are you, are, that's, that's for me. Hello? Yeah, it is. It, okay, she's saying on page 12, we calling out seven. 725.9. And then on page two, you said page two? It's 13, it's 725.2. Thirteen, thirteen's the accessory building. Okay, where am I? That's just a typo because actually the house is at the seven twenty nine point seven twenty nine. Yeah, it does read top of house new roof versus top of garage roof. So it's on the accessory building page thirteen, Christy, but it yeah. Yeah, so it's a type. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's at the top left corner. Is it correct on 14? Yes. And so it's seven, it's it's 725.9? Correct. 
Thank you. Um, just for the commission and for the applicants, I've been driving down West Kingston on Google Street View. And Harold, you hot tip for you, you might want to look to 412 West Kingston Avenue. 412 West Kingston Avenue? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have additional questions, Joe? No, that the height of that was important just because of its relevant relationship to the accessory building. Absolutely. Uh, Jessica, why don't we come back to your questions slash comments about the, um, the accessory building, the garage? Uh, you know, my, my major notes were that, uh, we'll stay on this elevation. What slide is this 14 was that, um, the, the coplanar dormers are not something that we can typically approve in order for the dormers to read as dormers. They need to step in at the sides and the front, but they also have to have windows. Um, and then if I can look at the other elevations of the garage, which appears to be slide 13. The double hung windows at the front and the back really seem oversized for the gable and too close to the rakes. So I would just lean on the, you know, the windows, um, doors and windows, 612 rhythm. 612 and uh, the chapter 4 window section. Say okay. six twelve. Six twelve, yeah, six point one two. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Heinlein. Any other comments or questions or points of clarification, commissioners? All right. Uh we are going to close for deliberation in three, two. All right. All right. <laughs> Commissioner Bonaparte. Actually, I was just going to mention since we moved to the accessory um, building regarding the garage, I'm not sure if that was already said or not. Um, if it was a one or two car garage that it reads as two bays versus one. Oh, great. Catch. Materials for that. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte. Okay. Any other anything else, commissioners, before we close? Again, in three, two, one. All right, close for deliberation. So um, I've been making some notes here. I'm sure, and Phil's been feverishly taking notes. Just need someone to step forward and uh, and and make a motion. And you know, we can have a discussion as we bring up points. So maybe let's talk about the points that would be included in the motion, and see where we are. Commissioner Hayden, uh, the co-planer dormers on both the building or both the the home and the accessory structure need to be resolved mm -hmm. D on the rear uh on all, dorm the dorm all dormers all are, dormers are even the shed dormers on the side elevations uh probably not okay so let's the, be specific the dormers um on the the, the uh, rear that show the uh, where the porch is the, uh, the second level porch that that dormer needs to be moved back so it's not coplanar with the first floor. Um, and then the both dormers on the garage need to be moved back so that they are not coplanar with the side elevations. Okay. It seems as if if you can blow that um, the with the garage door or where the door dormers are shown on on the Do you like the front or the rear? Or a rear? Okay. Either one. Okay. 
those are not those those dormers are going all the way to the peak. They need to be brought down. Mm -hmm. Brought in. Brought in. Mm -hmm. I don't think that applies on the uh, residents. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not sure. So we'll go to Commissioner Walker and then over to Commissioner Goodwin. And then for those. The elevation of the accessory unit is higher than the neighboring house. The neighboring house, it looks like from that site well is 719.8. And the garage is 723.2. Will you point out your slide, please? Commissioner Walker, so we can get there with you. I'm sorry. The slide number. Oh, the uh, Zotwile is 35. 16, maybe? Uh, 35 is what she said. Yeah. That would have been the July presentation. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, well, the this, this survey would be the same now, right? Uh, I, we've added updated Zotwile. For I believe this month that shows all the historic houses. Jill, are you looking at uh, 324 West Kingston? It's on the it's on the big screen here. Are you looking at 324? Because this is 320. This is their house. Right. Is this? Were you looking at this one? Right. So the neighboring house is 719. Right. Uh huh. The garage for a subject house is 723.2 based on page 12 or 13. Thirteen. I was just looking at where it was located on the lot. Uh, the only reason why I was looking at why I was located on the lot in comparison to the main house was wondering if it was put on the Zotwall survey, um, like the with the main house, like if you would see it. I don't think that would be a helpful exhibit. I don't think you, I, I don't think that would be helpful. So it might be helpful for us to know how far back the garage is, not only from the, and maybe it's here, I don't recall seeing it, from the primary structure, but also from the neighboring structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the issue that continues to crop up the accessory dwelling units. Prominence. How the rhythm of the neighborhood changes with that change. Okay. Um, why don't we keep going with the other things that we want to to see or. Yeah, Commissioner Goodwin. Uh, yeah, and revisiting Jim's point about the rear uh, dormer or porch, if you will, being coplanar. Uh, maybe some of the architects could help out with this, but this is not a dormer that has a window in it toward the rear. It's a it's a dormer that has a, a walk, um, has a porch, a walkout porch on it. And I'm, I'm just concerned about insetting it, um, how that could be uh, resolved. Um, or if, if in this case, it would be more prudent just to leave it just go planar. 
Commissioner Mirren, why don't we kick that question over to you, sir? With this back door? Yeah, on the rear elevation. It's because it's a porch and not necessarily a dormer. Um, how should we be addressing it? Um, I mean, it's not visible from the street, so uh, making sure that the, the door works and the window, I, I don't know what else we can do from that. So my it doesn't. Opinion, I should say, I'm sorry, in my opinion. No, I'm sorry. Will you repeat that, Commissioner Muir? The last part. It's not. It's not visible from the street. So as long as the door works, and I mean, it looks like again we've got trim on trim. So maybe for the door to move over, and but outside of that, I mean, within our purview, it's it's not. There's nothing that's visible from the street from that aspect. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Heinemann. Uh, sure, I think the larger issue with this one is is what I'd mentioned from the side elevation. This is a three and twelve, and whatever's happening in the middle of the house is closer to a six and twelve. And those two, if Christy, if you can zoom in at the top of that new gable, somehow there's something happening where that little bit of line is there, and that just needs to be resolved. There's a variety of ways to resolve it um, that I think would not necessitate changing the planar attribute of that wall because I'm, I'm with Phil. It might not be the best thing to do from a building science perspective, but my larger concern is that the the roof be, you know, graphically accurate on the front elevation, the back elevation, and that this transition, whatever it is, be worked out. Okay. All right. So graphically accurate and workout transition. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, so I can't make a motion. I will tell you the list that I've written. Um, show corrected info on the height of the house, 725.9 on all documents. Um, look at the uh, show precedent for uh, Craftsman columns on the Tudor house, Tudor style house. Um, restudy the transitional point from the addition, the roof of the addition to the, um, I guess the porch balcony area. Uh, study bring in the dormers on the garage and set them on the back of the uh, uh on the rear elevation move the door over a bit the door to the balcony show the type of uh, be consistent and and document that the roof covering has uh, asphalt architectural shingles we need the impervious calculation of the rear yard from the historic house, from the historic thermal wall. We need a tree protection plan. What else? What else do we have? Wasn't something mentioned about the trim um, around the windows or that dormer on the main house? Oh, yes, so. And corner boards on all of the upper level massing okay. on both the main structure and the accessory structure. Okay, show uh, window trim and corner boards on primary structure of house. Is that correct? And the accessory structure and the accessory structure on primary and accessory structure. I hope someone else is writing this down. I cannot make a motion. I 
I'll let someone else pick it up. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of notes scribbled here, but yeah, I want to make a motion to continue this application. Uh, we need to. Um, I think the first thing that I would like to mention is to resolve the roof. We need a roof plan, and the roof plan which resolve the the two roof pitches, uh, the inconsistency in the roof pitch of a 312 to a 612. Also resolve the funneling effect at the intersection of the of the two gables. Um, we need to show the correct elevation of the height of 725.9 consistently on all drawings for elevation as shown. We need to provide a um, impervious area calculation a tree protection plan. We need to show the precedent for the front columns. Um, and um, if the if the craftsman style presented is acceptable for this Tudor style home. Uh, at the rear elevation, move the door at the balcony. Uh, we need to document materials for the roof. We need to show window trim corner boards on primary structure and accessory structure. And then moving on to the garage, the accessory structure, uh, need to um, remove, remove the coplanar elements. The upper windows um, need to be adjusted uh, either in size or position, they're too close to the rakes. And uh, the door, the garage door must read is a two bay, not a single bay garage door. And please help me out here. We, I think we need to know the distances of the, we need to know exactly where the garage is placed on, on the site plan. Relative to the primary structure and the uh, neighboring structure. And that's that's <laughs> thank you so much, Commissioner Goodwin. Motion made, seconded, seconded. by Commissioner Hayden. Uh, any discussion of the motion? Friendly amendments? Did we want to just add mention of the garage door detail materials just to? Yeah, over there. It looks... sure. Friendly amendment accepted. Thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte. All right. I just have one more question. The the garage is basically two stories. Is that correct? No. Is it? No. It's one. Or. Mm. Once you follow it, that that train of thought. Well, right if it is a two story it. garage, is it? Is there any reason that? Is there any need for it to show that way from it's two stories? Yeah, the side elevation and in particular. Okay, I don't know if they're if they've done that. It looks like there is some kind of horizontal something or other there. Where the um, lower roof line meets, but I'm not sure. I'm, Um, why don't we, Christy, do you know the answer to that? If this is a 1 or 2 story. Uh, to me, it's reading a, a bit as a 2 story, like the earlier application mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. similar conditions. Mm -hmm. It, the arrow looks like it's pointing to fate, like a fascia mm -hmm. board. Um, but it's the, it's the 2 story wall element, right? The, the, the Christy, I think that's the, the gutter and downspouts that weren't updated when the roof went up. If you look at the bottom, it looks like they're downspouts. Why don't we, in order for clarity, open up and ask Mr. Joan, uh, Jordan. Mr. Jordan, we're opening up. Mr. Jordan, will you um, shed some light on the garage, please? The garage is really a, a two-story, but it, it, it has one-story walls knee walls for the second story and okay. um just 
if, and they won't be, you know, the dormer will be pushed back so it won't be lining up with the first four walls. Right, so it won't be co-planar. Um, co okay, uh, thank you for that, sir. Uh, while we still have it open, I'm gonna throw it to one of our architects and just ask, <laughs> Is, is that a way to resolve that or should it show that from the exterior that it's two it's two stories or at least one and a half? I, I think from Jill's Chris. comment that something needs to delineate that that first from second story. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Much like our other application. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, Chris. Let's close uh, and get back to deliberating. So then to Commissioner Walker's point, it should be something with the garage should show that there are two stories there, much like with our other application. Is that a friendly amendment, Commissioner Walker? Do, will you word it for him? Yeah, the, the continuation portion of it should include some some kind of um, adequate representation of a two-story structure, either by placement of windows or some delineation to show that it is legitimately a two-story building. Friendly amendment accepted? Accepted. Thank All right. Are you still good with that, Commissioner Hayden? Well, yes. What I'm looking at, if you look at the side elevation, in both side elevations, they're delineated slightly differently so that the roof, you know, comes down on the, the lower one for the, the, the garage roof and then the dormer roof is, is up. And then you look on the other side and it looks more like a piece of trim. The, the roof graphics is not delineated. I think that's not helping visually what we're trying to make happen here. Plus, I think moving the co-planner element back is going to have do a whole lot towards helping this issue go away. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hayden. All right. Um, so should we restate the motion? All right. Let's restate it this time with feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I make a motion to continue based on the following. Um, uh, let's um, have a roof plan that resolves the, the two roof pitches from front to rear. Resolve the funneling effect at the intersection of the gables on the right and left elevations. Uh, we need to show the correct elevation of 725.9 wherever elevations are mentioned in the submittal. Uh, add the impervious area calculation and a tree protection plan. Show the precedent for the front columns. And if the craftsman style is acceptable for this home, for the uh, rear elevation, move the door at the balcony. Document materials for the roof. Show window trim and corner boards on primary structure and accessory structure. And moving on to the garage, uh, we will uh, the uh, the. No coplanar walls. The walls of the dormer need to move back. The upper windows need to be moved away, either resized or moved away from the rakes. The door needs to read as a two bay, not a one bay door, and we need uh, specifications for the garage door. And we need to know the distance. We need to know exactly where the garage is positioned on the site plan with regard to its distance from the house. And then um, also on the garage, we need to show the second floor delineation with respect to the first floor. 
Okay, um, I know that both Jill and Christy are going to ask for us to provide standards. All right, so I've jotted a few down. All right, um, so as far as the roof forms go, that's 6.10. Let me know when you're ready for the next one. Okay, as far as the trim goes, that's 6.11. The doors and windows, 6.12. That's for uh, the movement of any time we mention moving windows, um, even on the uh, balcony of the rear elevation, we asked to move the door in a little. That's for that one too. 6.12. All right, materials 6.15. Although that's doesn't really speak to roof materials. Um, hold on. You can cite roofing. Uh, it roof forms and materials is 6.10. Sorry about that. So roof forms the material 6.10. So when we ask for asphalt, asphalt architectural shingles be stated, that's 6.10. Um, let's see, I wrote down some other ones. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da. Um, as far as the garage goes, that's 8.9. Um, garage doors, 8.9 number 6. Are there any other standards we should be adding? Okay. I'm afraid to ask this question. The garage door is 8.9 number 6. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I was going to ask Candy if we needed to repeat it again. She says no. Okay. <laughs> All right, so motion made by Commissioner Goodwin. Thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. Seconded by Commissioner Hayden. Uh, any further discussion of the motion? Let's vote. All right, Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Hayden? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte? Yes. Commissioner Hindman? Yes. Commissioner Muren? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to continue passes 7 0. Thank you so much. All right. Do we need a little break? Um, I would like you to make maybe an announcement. Sure. It is 536. Uh, yeah. We are on application number 10. Um, I would hope we could get through application number 12 tonight. So, um, what, so what, what does everyone think? The next one has uh, some minor issues, and if we get our act together, we can probably do that pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I think we can make it through 12. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, so should we? We're making a call 13 through 15. I think we'll so. It's be heard at the next meeting. 537. Okay, okay. I'll let everyone know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, five minute break, 10 minute, five minute break. Let's take five. Okay. All right. Thank you.
Okay, I think we're about to get back started. Everyone back from break. No, not everyone's back yet. Um, I think Chris Mern has left the meeting, so the record can show that 545 Chris Mern has left. Um, we are at, with PJ's recusal, we are, we just have quorum for number 10. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if Ashley Ashley, Hello, are you yes. With us? Hi. Hi. Um, is Philip? Did Did Philip join you? I am on. Hi. Have y'all been sworn in? No, I have not. Okay, we'll do that and then get started. All right, Ashley and Philip, if you will raise your right hands, please, and respond. I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information that you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is a continuation from August 11th for clarification on siding material for the coplanar rear dormer to restudy windows in the rear dormer, add a window on the right side, and make the gable window smaller in proportion and to provide window selections. So at this time, um, you'll see the staff analysis evaluates the changes made. And I'm going to turn it over to Ashley and Philip to talk through the project. I'm going to start with the si slide on siding. So, Ashley and Philip, if you would just state your names and your addresses for the court reporter and let me know where you'd like to start. Ashley Jimenez, 1349 Downs Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. And Philip Ingram, uh, 1533 Wickford Place, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28203. Now, I'll hand it off to you, Ashley. Okay, very good. Yes, yeah, so this first item, um, the it's 6.15 for the materials. We are going to go with the half inch Nichiha lap siding um, since that is an uh, approved product. And um, we were earlier looking at the acre product and after um, the last meeting have decided that half inch Nichiha is going to be the way we'll go. Um, roof form, so the coplanar dormer on the rear elevation, we did update that and pulled that dormer in from the wall below, I believe, yes. Um, you can see the revision bubble there. So that has pulled in and is no longer coplanar. Um, in addition, so that was to meet the requirement of 6.10. Um, as far as the doors and windows, which is the third item, 6.12, um, on this right elevation, the gable window has transitioned to a casement window and it is smaller. This window is in a staircase. Um, the other two gable windows are in bedrooms, so they will need to meet egress. So these e meet egress and um, are of smaller proportion. So you'll see those gables on this right front and left elevation where the casements were changed. And then specifically on this right elevation, it's cut off on what I can see. So maybe scroll to the right a little bit. Thank you. The window to the right of that side entry door. That was a window that we added in the laundry room on the right elevation. In addition, the window above it in the dormer on the kind of triangular shape of the dormer, we just moved that, door, that window based on the new layout um of kind of the bathroom upstairs we had to make some tweaks with that um for that making that dormer non-coplanar 
So that is the right elevation. May we look at the um, front and left really quick just to address those casements, the front casement there. You can see um, it did get less wide and less tall. Um, and then on the left elevation, you'll see both the non-co planar dormer and the casement window in the gable. And then on the rear elevation, we've added three windows and adjusted a window on this rear dormer. So starting from the left, um, I love Christy, how you have previous and now it's so helpful. I'm gonna do that from now on. Um, so the window on the left of the August elevation on that dormer um, was a little too close to the corner boards as you all stated. And so what we did was we actually moved that to the right a bit and now it's in the shower. So I had to make it a transom since it's in the shower and we do need some privacy there. Um, and then that window that was on the right elevation and kind of the triangle of the dormer, that window is now in the water closet. So I kind of still made the interior work, hopefully meeting your requirements with the windows on this exterior dormer. In addition, the four windows that um, have separate casing in between um, is in the bedroom, whereas previously we had two. And then we added a window in the walk-in closet as well to the right of that. And so um, that is all the windows we modified or added. Um, we also made a selection on our doors and on our windows. Let me pull that up here. I needed to be reminded what we ended up choosing. We're going with a Geldwin double hung wood window. And I've included all of our, um, all the details you guys like to see. I'd be happy to answer any questions in regards to those. And then the last item, and here's some examples. They're so beautiful and authentic. Um, the last items are the streetscapes that you all requested. I, with this being on a corner, those things were pretty confusing. <laughs> so thank you for telling me which lot it went on. And I've added those two as our last two slides. And yes, thank you, Christy. And I do want to point out as it relates to these elevation surveys, um, we are maintaining the current main level subfloor height. That is all. Flip, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think you had to cover it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ashley and Philip. I see. Do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? Um, we have a caller identified as Anthony, and that's all I know. Okay. Anthony, are you calling in to talk about this project? Should we take that as a no? I think so. Yeah. Anthony, oh, are you trying to speak, Anthony? If you are, we cannot hear you. Uh, I have a suggestion, Anthony, why don't you try and leave the meeting and then come back and we'll pick back up with you when we can hear you. I'm so sorry. Um, do we want to go to commissioner questions and then circle back? Sounds good. Okay, commissioners, questions, comments uh, for the applicant. Commissioner Goodwin. 
uh, just a question on the two windows and the gables that were reduced in size. Are those, are those now casement windows? They were double hung. And um, are those casement windows now? Yes, they are casement windows um, with being able to get egress for bedrooms. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any additional questions, Commissioner Goodwin? Ashley, the new windows just referenced by Commissioner Goodwin um, are they are taller, longer, and less. Linear. Yes, they are less tall. They are shorter and skinnier. Right, and so they do. Uh, they're not comparable to the current windows. Um, and I know that that's going to come up in deliberation. So do you want to address that now? Sure, I'd be happy to address that. Um, this was a comment that was made, I believe, by Hinman um, last time specifically to change from a double hung to a casement so that the window opening may be smaller and still meet egress. Sure, but not taller and skinnier, right? That's well, sure. we'll let Commissioner Heinemann uh, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. kind of uh, restate what she said then. Um, sure. uh, in fact, we might kick it over to her. Uh, I do have one more question. Thank you so much, by the way, for all of your responsiveness to the points that we made. Um, You're welcome. I, I, well, maybe this is a question for the architects. Um, the windows, the one that's in your, the four in your bedroom, the uh, shower and the, the walk in, they seem flush to the right uh, a lot. It, it just seems like the rhythm is off there a little. Um, and so I'll be asking the architects to kind of speak to that because I might be off. I might be the one that's off. So I just wanted to see if you had any thoughts on that before I, before we talk about it in deliberation. Sure. Yeah, the the windows on the back here are really dictated by the spaces, the master suite that we have to create back here. Um, you know, a shed dormer is an excellent way to get our spaces up there, but I am given the current width of the foundation that we're working with. Um, I'm not able to split it up equally to have those windows both centered on the interior of the room and the exterior of the room. Um, and with this being on the back of the home, um, where it's not a really visible streetscape, um, that that's kind of my my reasoning why it's okay to be off a little bit and really focus more on the interior spaces. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for that. All right, uh, commissioners, any other questions before we close for deliberation? Commissioner Goodwin. Question on the direct vent fireplace. Um, what, what is that device and does that have a blower in it? Is that something that intrudes from the exterior wall of a home? Um, is that on the left elevation? Correct. Yes, it is a direct vent fireplace, so it is a metal piece that would um, stick out from the home and um, very common on a lot of homes these days. And um, we, we did note it and um, it is on the side of the house where we have a large um, side yard and we do intend. Let me just double check what I'm about to say here. Um, I believe we intend that the fence would go in front of, let me just double check that section um, so that it would not be um, seeable from the street. Correct. Thank you, Philip. Okay. Proposed. I'm just going to confirm that. Okay. Yes, that is correct. We will have a fence that will um, obstruct the view of that. Okay. All right. Uh, other questions, commissioners? All right. We will close in three, two, one. All right. Uh, 
Jessica, will you speak to the 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 windows, the casement windows on the front elevation, please? I just looking at it, um, it doesn't seem to be comparable or in rhythm with the other windows. And uh, Ashley was responding uh, to comments that you made. So will you clarify or just shed a little light <laughs> on that, please? Yeah, sure. That's no problem. Um, Christy, can you go to the. Sorry, I'm way down in the August presentation, the existing versus proposed on the front. I mean, I think the reality of it is that it's a really tight project and there's not a lot of tolerances. And so, you know, the hope is that we can meet the patterns that we reference in the, um, uh, what is the book that we always reference the getting your house right book. But the reality is we need egress windows in these in these bedrooms and a double hung. That the double hung we're seeing in the, in the August um, representation can't possibly can't meet 2nd story egress. And so the code will require us to go to a casement window in order to meet egress. You know, as commissioners, I think we've seen that done, you know, either in the light configuration shown or in uh, a light configuration that mimics the 6 over 1 with an enlarged. Um, an enlarged million in the horizontal mutton to mimic the sash. Um, and I think, you know, we've accepted either the, the general hope is that that window in the gable is then. You know, smaller than the 1st level windows, because, you know, just due to that classic pattern. That we sure. reference, but, but, you know, the applicant has really thoughtfully provided enough information here. That it's clear that this number 6 window that we're looking at here on the front and on both sides is the smallest possible egress casement that gel 1 provides, or that really any window manufacturer is going to provide in an egress casement. So it's, it's, it's logistically not possible for it to be smaller. So then okay. the question becomes, you know, what we want to, what we want to do if it doesn't work for people. I think the other reality is, you know, in the floor plan on the front elevation that we're looking at right now, which is slide 8. These number 1 windows on the, on the bottom also don't meet egress. And so those are probably going to end up being larger. And so they may end up coordinating better with this upper window anyway. Um, but the, the 2850 doesn't. Doesn't meet the area requirement for egress either. So I think we're probably looking at something that does coordinate better than uh, than we imagine. The um, the upper window, you know, it also just based on how tight the site is, we're looking at it being close to the floor. I think that's just a reality of how tight it is to the site. So it has, you know, like um has like a, an extension limiter on the on the opening of the casement. Mm -hmm. And so I think because we're already below, we're probably already below that two foot mark on the sill. You know, it's, we could potentially ask for it to be lowered a couple of inches. It's all, it's a really tight design. So I think there's only so much that we can ask. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what can I ask a question? Okay. Yeah. So when I was, and this is from my edification, Jessica, when I was writing the staff memo, I was looking at the proportionality um, and how. The proportionality of the original proposal seemed to match a lot better um, than the narrowness of this window. Um, and then it was also the grid configuration appeared a little different. Is and so I I guess I was just looking for guidance on how to guide applicants because how I would have guided them would be to just copy this, but make it a casement and tr and try and make it smaller. Is that not? Can you talk a little to that maybe? Uh, sure. I mean, the, the other window in the August proposal, I think was a 2850. I mean, the applet. The good thing is the applicants given us the information, right? So, um, and a 2850 casement, um, it, it would meet egress. So in theory, we could keep that same size window and meet the egress requirement in a casement configuration, except we asked her to make it smaller, right? And, and that's the hope. The hope is that it can be smaller, but the smallest possible casement that can meet egress is the one that she's shown. So if, if our intention is for the gable windows to be smaller, which I do think is the right thing to do, then for example, one direction would be for the first level windows to be larger, which, I think is probably where we're going to end up because the first level windows also have to meet egress because there's a bedroom down there. Does that is that answer your question? Yeah. Helpful. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments about this project? Anyone think that our uh, suggestions are uh, our requirements were not met? All right. So, because we believe that they were met, who wants to craft a motion? All right, uh, Commissioner Goodwin had the last one. What about you, Commissioner Hayden? D do you believe so? Okay. I move to approve as they have met all of our conditions. Per the standards we stated in the continuance. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Hayden. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Goodwin. Do we have discussion of the motion? Can we require what we normally require for casement windows that are used for egress? Can mm -hmm. be consistent? Yep. Commissioner Hayden. Can we do what? So to be consistent with what we've required literally every other applicant to do is that this bar becomes a sash bar and this is an open space so that the windows in the in the dormer match the window design of the windows in the first floor. I, I would defer to the architects as to whether or not, I mean, that, that doesn't sound to me like that's what Jessica asked for. Jessica, Commissioner Heinemann, will you help us please? Yeah, no, I think Christine's absolutely right. That's what we typically ask for is that the configuration of the casement mimic the configuration of the double hung or that the light configuration of the downstairs windows be, you know, Full lights instead of, you know, six over ones and either way I think is acceptable. I think it's the coordinating configuration is what we typically request. Um, and I think if we're. If we're looking to, um, to to model this as an approval, then asking for the casements in the six over one configuration is probably the smoothest path forward for the staff. Is that correct, Christy? Either way is fine. They would just have to change all the other windows on the house to be six over six. So that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? I mean, it, we could leave it to the designer's discretion, which yes. is what I would prefer to do. But because it faces the street, wouldn't that it's push fine. it to a no. continuance, or can we leave it at the discretion I of the designer? I, if I think you can leave it at the discretion of the designer. Uh, that would be my preference uh, from an architectural perspective, that the designer have the discretion to either represent the casements as mimicking a six over one or to bring the other windows into six over sixes. And I, I think it's, it's really that the, the designer should, should have that decision. Okay. This will take a while. Okay. Uh, uh, well, that'd be easier. Jessica, can you write it? All right, give me a second. Um, or can I ask another question while we're writing things? Or please we, do. Can you give over to staff um, final approval of all details of windows? Because there's a number of windows that are missing mullion trim. And that's yeah. also not a condition that we normally approve. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, so the, so what we're looking for is an approval with the condition that the gable casements mimic a six over one with enlarged mutton at sash. Or 
all windows be six over six at designer's discretion. And staff to review all window details. Okay, so that's a friendly amendment since we have a motion and a second on the floor. Yeah. So oh, Jim just told me to rewrite his motion. Well, it, 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 we're going to have you do that as a, a, a friendly amendment because we have a motion on the floor. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> You're writing the motion? Still. Yes, because there was a second. Jessica is giving you a friendly amendment. How does that work, Jill? So because the motion has been seconded, it's already out there. So it's with the board or the commission, but sort of as an alternate, he, Jim, Commissioner Hayden could make the request to withdraw the motion, but it would have to be approved. So the withdrawal of the motion would then have to be approved by the commission. We can so you that. could try to could she offer make the motion and say if there's no objection, you know, try to do it a, a quicker way. But a substitute motion. So that was for the withdrawal of the motion. Haven't we always done this as a friendly amendment that both the motion maker and the second accept or don't accept? Hopefully we can get clarity on this process for our next meeting. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So the way we're doing it now, Jim is writing it. Uh, Commissioner Heinemann is giving a friendly amendment pertaining to the windows, right? Um, and we will take it from there, knowing that we have two more cases to cover. All right, Jim, uh, let us know when you want Commissioner Heinemann to jump in with her friendly amendment. Fire away. Okay, friendly amendments that the gable casements mimic a six over one configuration with enlarged muttons at the sash. Yeah. Or okay. Or all windows be six over six configurations, and the decision is at the designer's discretion. There's more when you're ready. What was the uh, description of the mutton? Mutton. The enlarged. Yeah, an enlarged horizontal mutton to mimic the sash. Okay. What else? Did you get the six or, over, or six over six? Yeah. Or six over six. The decision is at the designer's discretion. Staff to review all window details. And I need to add to the friendly amendment staff to review front door.
Anything else about the front door or specifically, or just review the front door? We regularly just give the complete review of the front door to staff. So I don't think we need to say anything else about that. Okay. Okay. That it? That's it for the friendly amendment. Okay. You okay with the friendly amendment? Yes. Okay. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Hayden, seconded by Commissioner Goodwin. Discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Hayden? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte? Yes. Commissioner Hindman? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Let the record show that Commissioner Henningsen is back. Okay, our next application is 325 and 331 East Boulevard. Uh, John and Eric, are you with us? Yes, we are. Can you hear us? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> You've been sworn in. No, we've not. All right. If you will, please raise your right hand and respond. I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. So. Commissioners and applicants, the applicants have done, in my opinion, an excellent job of summarizing the reasons the project was continued from August 11th. That's on um, slides number five and six. They've addressed each commissioner comment um, to keep the presentation to a minimum. Um, applicants, I would ask you take the very minimum amount of time uh, to explain the changes because you have done a phenomenal job of writing them out already that the commission has read and reviewed so that we can get right to um, commissioner comment. Because it's my understanding, no one has signed up to speak for or against this application. Okay, wonderful. Eric and John, if you would state your names and your addresses for the court reporter, and hit the high points, please. John Abish, five hundred one Olmstead Park Place, Charlotte, North Carolina, two eight two zero three. Eric Lemieux, eleven oh six Euclid Avenue, apartment four hundred eight, two uh, eight two zero three. All right. If we could go just to the site plan um, and I'll just start it off. Thank you so much for your time. We'll keep this very short, clear and concise. That's why we provided the first couple of pages, just writing out those comments and really trying to show graphically as much as we could. So really the main goal of this one was to restudy the three story presentation and rhythm as discussed last time, strengthening the contextual foundation levels and architectural details, cornice and roof levels. Um, the spacing between um, 321 and building A of our building. Um, and then the, the side, light con side light configuration that was just a, 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 one of the mo more minor comments. Um, but as we go forward, um, I'll, I'll let Eric speak to the site plan. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, the two major changes on this one was just um, acknowledging commissioners um, Bonaparte and Heinemann on the building spacing on the front four units, um, which we've shifted closer into each other to maintain a consistency along East Boulevard, um, as well as um, addressing commissioners Barth and Goodwin's comments on the sidewalk connections to each unit. Um, so we've we've clarified that on this drawing. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so on, on this slide, I know the DCA and uh, Commissioner Goodwin had some questions about um, our dimensions. So we tried to make a thoughtful approach on clarifying the source of these dimensions from our licensed surveyor versus GIS. Uh, we've also included the survey in this package um, for reference as needed. We also restudied the setback off Euclid Ave. Um, I know that was another major item that we needed to look into and restudy. Um, so uh, because the pavement width and curb line varies along Euclid Ave, um, and also having um, the knowledge that 401 um, East Boulevard was really the source of our context, we um, made a thoughtful approach to to really update the building articulation and setbacks off Euclid Ave to be consistent with that. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. And Christy, do you mind zooming in, um, particularly on the Euclid Ave um, building facade line? Yeah, perfect. 
Um, so I, we all thought that um, Commissioner Heinemann made a really good um, comment um, regarding thermal, um, th the thermal footprint versus the negative space of our walk-ups and, and balconies. So uh, we tried to further clarify that for the commission by um, indicating in dark blue our thermal wall footprint um, and light blue kind of being our negative space balcony walk-ups um, from dimension from the back of the existing sidewalk um, to use as a consistent reference or consistent reference point. Um, so we've actually edited our building articulation to um, to provide greater length from the back of sidewalk compared to the previous structure on site, um, as well as providing um, a dimension that is comparable to the 401 East Boulevard contextual uh, building uh, or reference point. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so for our site plan, um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, Commissioner Bonaparte's um, question from our previous submittal. We just wanted to clarify the, the trees that are being removed, the size and the type, which we've done. Um, we're looking forward to working with the DCA um, on our landscape design more thoroughly um, when we get further um, throughout the development process. Um, we've also um, showed the walnut tree or pecan tree being replanted um, on site. Um, so that was another item we wanted to clarify for you all. Um, and I believe um, Commissioner um, Weinberg, Weinberger, excuse me, um, had a question about um, pervious area. Um, from our understanding, um, I, we, were, we thought that permeability applied to single family, but we want to acknowledge that question and that concern. Um, we're talking through that with the DCA as well. So we've reached out to about five manufacturers um, to determine what type of permeability or previous pavers, excuse me, um, might might work for this site in the alleyway um, and also help with our drainage. Um, next slide, please. Survey or then. Yeah, so this is just a survey, um, just for reference. We can on the next slide. And finally, um, Commissioner um, Heinemann made um, a thoughtful point during the last meeting um, referencing the context of the 525 site. Um, we thought this would be good to kind of show the previous structure, our proposed rendering, um, as well as the 525 site and the building presence on the sidewalk. Um, and our, our proposed site has um, more activation, improving the pedestrian um, experience compared to the previous structure. And we think that we provided more articulation compared to 525. Uh, next slide, and I'll turn it over to John now. All right, so on this slide, what I wanted to do is just show datum lines based on what we talked about last time with 401 and then 321 as well. Um, just showing those main lines and trying to create a solid uh, foundation line throughout project. So you'll see I raised the brick line at the base of our project to really line up with the uh, first floor elevation um, of both structures. But as you can see, 401 is a lot lower um, but then 321 as the site slopes. So from left to right, building A, you'll see it. There's a little variety to it. And I think, you know, there's a continuity along East Boulevard, but within that continuity, there's a lot of variety. So what we tried to do is um, kind of uh, the building B, we lowered the eave a little bit to provide a little variety. So it doesn't look like one big building, but it starts to break it up as the same type of building, but a little bit of variety in window sizes and things like that. And what that helps do is align with the datums of 401 um, East Boulevard with building B that's right on the corner. And then building A aligns more with 321 with those datum lines. So you'll see that the uh, second floor balcony uh, brick ba uh, column bases are different um, on building A versus building B. Um, and, and those were just visual cues that I was aligning with um, the neighboring properties. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, East Bolo, uh, Euclid Ave, uh, one of the biggest concerns that you had last time was just the rhythm. And uh, as I looked through the elevation more, I realized that one of the units really need to be flipped internally. And what that helped do was just create a way better rhythm with uh, the entry stoops along those three internal units versus the previous uh, presentation. And I think that really helped a lot um, around uh, for the language of the, uh, around the whole property. Um, what we did is we put a second level balcony on that corner unit as well. I think it's gonna be, um, as we step down, I think it, it ties into the, to the, the language of the building better. Um, next slide, please. 
Uh, that was just the, yeah, the main elevation. Uh, we can go to the next slide since we've kind of talked about that. I'd like to get to, uh, that is obviously, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look in at the, that's the left elevation. Yeah, that's the building, left, yeah. sorry. So left elevation is, is somewhat similar to the right elevation. We can go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Sorry. <laughs> so the, the real elevation was was another point of concern. Um, so if you compare the two from the previous presentation, what we did was we added a second level balcony above the porch entry along that unit um, in building A that's on the back side. So to your right on the screen. And what that does is from the alley when you're on Euclid, you see a front entrance of that unit. So you're not just looking at a bunch of garage doors. And I think that helps kind of elevate the experience along Euclid. Next slide, please. And then one of the things that we didn't discuss last time was just the courtyard elevations. What I did anyways was, I know we didn't talk about it, but I updated it anyways. What I wanted to do is sort of mimic the rhythm along the front streetscapes as well. So you'll see the massing is different um, and just um, the rhythm and the articulation has, has been changed to kind of be continuous with the front elevations as well. So really, those are the main changes. I won't I won't take up too much more time, but th those are the main changes along uh, these elevations. And that's right. pretty much what I have. Thank you so much, John and Eric. Uh, and since we know that there's no one on the line to speak for or against this application, I would say that that's a bit of a success for you guys. Um, and I just want to say also thank you. Thank you so much for uh, listening, respecting, and responding to the comments made not only by the community uh, in which these buildings will be built, but to the commissioners as well. I think that this process that we go through is a bit of a collaboration that's only meant to make the buildings as well as the uh, districts better. So thank you so much for that. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Commissioners, questions or comments? For the applicants before we close for deliberation. Commissioner Heinemann's court is still up. Uh, Jessica. Okay. Uh, going once. Going twice. All right, let's close for deliberation. So this is how it's supposed to work peeps. Um, we have our list of. Uh, reasons for continuing this application. We have a very detailed um, uh, list of ways in which the applicants have addressed those concerns. Does anyone have anything that they want to say about the building um, that needs to be addressed? I think that they've been quite responsive to everything we've asked of them. Um, and with that said, do we have a motion? And feel free, people online, to uh, to to make a motion too. All right, we have. We have Commissioner Bonaparte, we have Commissioner Heinemann, we have Commissioner Hayden, we have Commissioner uh, Henningsen, we have Commissioner Walker, we have Commissioner Goodwin. Who wants to make a motion? I know who's going to second it, but who wants to make it? <laughs> All right, Commissioner Bonaparte. Yeah, so I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this application um, as it's not incongruous. Uh, with the district and um, that it meets uh, design guidelines, chapter six for new construction. All right, perfect. Thank you, Commissioner Bonaparte. Seconded by Second. <laughs> Commissioner Hayden. <laughs> Any discussion of the motion? Just a general comment. Sure. Again, applicants, great job in putting together an, an incredibly concise packet how you took her comments, responded to them, showed us in the packet how you responded to them, clearly showed what you presented before and what was updated. Uh, well done. And I gotta say, 
multifamily is incredibly difficult. And just to hear no comments on this last iteration is really, truly, and hats off. Great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Commissioner Heinemann. Yeah, I'm just going to say the same thing. The responsiveness that you've shown since the last application is astonishing. And it's, it, it's just a, I know just a massive amount of work and, um, and, uh, and, it, and it's really, I think, uh, this particular slide that we're looking at slide 13 and slide 12 are phenomenal exhibits to show what you've done and what you've accomplished and I want to thank you for um, engaging in the, in the process in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Heinemann. All right, folks, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Hindman. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve passes 7 0. Thank you. I just want to say Thank they you. set a record for multifamily uh, three months, three reviews. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we don't do the single family in three reviews. So yeah. they did an excellent job. Seriously. Yes, thank sir. you so much. Thank you all so much. We've uh, really appreciate we it. really appreciate it. We've put a, we've invested a lot of time into this, and um, we're just really grateful. So thanks again. Thank Have you. Take care. Thanks, Sean and Eric. Uh, Hayden, yes. Can you turn on your mic? Can you bundle this presentation up and use it as an example to future applicants when they get continued as to how to respond to a continuance? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Last application for the e for the evening. We have a addition at 611 West Park Avenue. And I'm looking for Michael Hopkins and Michael Doney. Michael, Michael and Michael, are you with us? Yes, we're here. Awesome. Have y'all been sworn in? No, we're not. Okay. And if you could get closer to your speaker, that would be might be helpful too. Sorry. Hi, Michael and Michael. Uh, if you will, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm that the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right, thank you. Guys, we're having a really hard time hearing you. Sorry, is that any better? Yep. Much. Great. Okay, uh, the application is for an addition. Uh, it is a one story bungalow on a very tiny lot on West Park Avenue. Um, the commission approved a new construction right next to it about a year or two ago. You might remember. Um, at this point, given our time crunch, I am going to turn it over to the applicants to explain the project. Applicants, I have you starting on page uh, four, showing the project locator map. And if you would just state your name, okay. if you'd state your name and your address for the court reporter, um, you can walk through your presentation. All right, my name's Michael Hopkins at 211 Mill Road in Charlotte. Um, so we're proposing to do an addition um, on this existing um, bungalow in Wilmore, hopefully kind of re restore some of the original um, historic charm to it. It's been neglected and kind of covered up over the years. Um, we want to make it more suitable to today's lifestyles and living with still keeping some of its original charm. Um, so that slide is just an overview map. Um, the next slide. The existing pictures of the house um, right now it's wrapped in vinyl siding. It's really hard to see um, a lot of the original character. Um, the next slide. All right, so these are. are Michael, we have lost you. Um, Michael, the next slide. 
Yes. My, we 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 completely lost you. And um, if you could just repeat what you said about slide six and and talk a little louder. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so slide six is a slide showing the uh, adjacent properties and the other lots surrounding this house. Um, and then moving on to the next slide is an aerial view showing the existing footprint of the house and the proposed addition to the right um, inside the lot line boundaries. Move to the next slide. And the top of this slide is the existing house from the street. The picture below it would be the new proposed addition to the right. The next slide. So this would be the elevation looking at it from from the right side, uh, which is currently all behind a privacy fence. But um, so moving to the next slide. And this is the rear elevation, showing it from the rear property line. The next slide. And this is the left side. Uh, it's probably the most visible side from the street, other than the front elevation, which would be adding a few windows um, to hopefully complement the existing windows. Um, the next slide. are showing the street elevation, the other properties surrounding this one, um, and more details of what we propose to do with the siding um, and the exterior trim, including the rails and the place in the columns. I believe that is the end of the presentation. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Hopkins. Christy, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? No. All right. Commissioners, questions of the applicant? Questions, comments? Commissioner Hindman, thank you. Um, Christy, uh, I want to reference this slide, which is slide eight. I believe it's the front elevation existing versus proposed. And then then I need us to reference the photographs of the existing house. But I, what I'd like to note on this slide eight is that on the existing, it appears that um, on the existing porch, the, the door is kind of centered on one bay and the window is kind of centered on another bay. And we need to go back to the um, existing photos because the door is actually it's closer to centered on the entire porch so i think this suggestion is is not actually putting a paired window in and leaving the door i think this suggestion is changing the fenestration on the front of the house completely i just want to confirm that um so we are proposing to shift the door to the right um, and add a second window but also remove the um, brick column in the center. So there'd just be two columns on either side with uh, wooden columns above it. So what I'm seeing here is we just, we need an accurate representation on the existing front elevation, if that's the case. Um, and on the proposed front elevation, we actually are seeing the center pier. But you're saying you're removing that? Um, there was notes in here to remove it. Um, I believe that was our intention to remove it. And I think that original picture on the first slide of the front elevation, it's shot at an angle that's kind of misleading to exactly the position of the front door. Um, the light is centered in the front ceiling, but that's actually just to the left of the door. 
So we can go check it out on Google Street View with Christy. I think yeah. most of the commissioners have visited the site, and um, and and while I agree there there is an angle on the existing photo, um, having spent time on the site and studied the house, the 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 door in the existing front elevation needs to be shown accurately. But Christy, maybe you can go to Google Street View okay. to help to help us um, reference that. So while Christie's doing that, I do think, you know, the Zoutwell survey and the uh, character of this street uh, probably does support, um, you know, widening the, the house, which is such an unusual pattern for us to see um, in this context. But having spent some time on the street, um, that, that's not something I object to. I just think there's a lot of details we probably need to get right. Um, the first is, is the vinyl siding to remain or not? No, it's to be removed. Okay, what siding are you proposing? We would prefer to do um, Hardy Artisan siding, but we want to see what's under the vinyl first and what condition the existing home's in and the type of siding that's original to the house. Okay. So staff will work with you on this. I think um, I think you're spot on that our preference would be for you to uh, take a look at what's under the vinyl and um, and for that to inform the decision. Hardy Artisan is actually not being made anymore. They're not taking any orders for it, but staff can talk to you about, you know, what other materials are approvable. But again, the decision will be based on what's underneath there. Um, where, where are you proposing to use Miratech? The soffits and exterior trim around the windows and the corner boards. Okay, staff can work with you on that too. We typically don't approve um, a Miratec product um, on soffits or on um, corner boards or windows. Um, that would okay. be, yeah, uh, th but they can work with you through the, the typical products that we approve. Um, the, um, of course, I understand we're looking at the existing condition here, and this is the, you can see the relationship of the door on the front porch relative to the existing window. So we need that existing condition. Yep. Updated. I totally see what you're saying. The, the, the light fixture is roughly centered on the porch, but the door is definitely justified much closer to that window and and much closer towards the center of the porch than is shown. Um, Absolutely. You're completely right. So the I'm going through my list here. We go back to the presentation to the front elevation. We'll just give you a couple of quick notes here. The paired window on the front elevation, when we get windows that are that close together, it's very rare in a historic application to see the tiny pieces of siding in between them. So we usually see, you know, an enlarged center jam and that there's a range of dimensions on that that are fairly typical for the neighborhood that staff can work with you on. Um, yep. porch, the porch rail relationship, given your relationship with grade, should should be looking at um, a proportion and a height that's more consistent with the historic district, which, you know, we, we know the code says 36 if you're more than 30 inches above grade, but there are a lot of ways that we handle that in the historic district since we rarely see a 36 inch guardrail in a historic house. Um, the, beam, okay. the beam at the front porch just needs to be larger. Um, it needs to have sort of a, a beam detail that feels that feels, you know, in proportion to the context. And the in the historic district, we don't um, we really don't ever see these pork chop eve returns unless it's um, you know a vinyl wrapped house. So I know that's what we're looking at in your existing photos, but it's not what's going to be underneath there, and it's not something that we reproduce okay. in those historic districts. Okay. Um, on the windows, we're showing an apron trim, and that's not typically seen on the historic districts. And then I think my last uh, big question is around. The parging versus the not parging. What what is parged in a, in its current state? What are you planning to do with that? And then with what you're adding, what is the is it parged or is it not parged? The um, existing house is parged. Um, the entire foundation. So we were planning on just matching it and trying to keep it consistent with what's there. Okay, so in the proposed where we're seeing brick, we're, it's actually parged to remain. 
it's to remain parched. Okay. Yeah. Right. So what shows as brick? There's no no finished brick on the existing or the proposed addition. Okay. And then I think my last comment has to do with the right side elevation. Actually, I have two comments. The right side elevation, Christy, which is my slide number nine. Um, on the proposed, we've just got to see some fenestration on these walls. Um, uh, we don't ju we just don't generally have large expanses of blank wall. And Chrissy, on the left side elevation, which is my slide number 11, I think one of the challenges that you'll find if we can zoom in on the proposed is when we try to cluster new windows with old windows, uh, the old windows just have really different characteristics of the new than the new windows, not the least of which is the color of the glass, which I think Commissioner Mirren hit on earlier, this, although I think he's not here. I'll, and that can be a huge challenge. Um, so while I think probably um, we'd consider, you know, increasing the glazing on the house, uh, I might only be speaking for myself and not the other commissioners. I think that when we choose to cluster new windows with old windows, it becomes an incredibly complicated um, and, and sometimes expensive process. So we're proposing all new wood windows um, with simulated divided light. None of the existing windows in the home are original. They've all been replaced with vinyl windows. Got it. So we would like them all to be consistent and match. Okay, so um, so we just need some documentation that, that those are non-historic windows. Then that would that would help. Sorry, that was not clear. Okay, that's everything on my list. Thank you, Commissioner Hindman. <laughs> Commissioners, anyone have anything that was not already on Commissioner Hindman's list to add? I I had a question. Okay, I just wanted Commissioner to Bonaparte. Sorry. I just wanted to clarify the um, the brick, uh, not column, but somebody help me out uh, in on the front porch in the center. It mentioned there was mention in the presentation that that's going to be removed, but it's showing in the proposed front elevation. So are we going to get a more accurate representation of that? Yes, we will clarify that. Okay. And make sure it's accurate in all the pages. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Commissioner Bonaparte. Commissioner Henningsen. And, and just a comment. You don't have to remove that center um, that center brickwork. I mean, th there's a lot of examples of craftsman houses that don't have columns on, on top of those brick piers, right? And it's really merely there so you can attach railing. So you don't have to remove it. Just a comment. Um, That's correct. I believe that a house originally had its front steps coming off between those two columns. And um, zoning approved the zoning variance for this addition, but would not approve replacing the steps on the front. Got it. So I believe the architect suggested keeping the steps where they are based on the zoning variance that was approved and removing that front um, brick column. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. You don't have to remove yeah. that brickwork. I mean, the, you don't have to have a a column, a wood column post on top of that brick. There are plenty of examples where there are plenty of examples where it's just decoration to really connect railing in between other columns. So if that's historic, yep, and it fits, I'd recommend leaving it. Okay. My my other comment, and 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 this is just a comment. I absolutely appreciate it's a really small, really challenging lot. When, when I look at the way the addition is added on, on the front elevation, this house, it really looks like this is the side elevation of a house that has an addition on the back. I, maybe I didn't say that correctly. Let, let, me, let me try that again. It, when I look at this, it looks like it's the side elevation of a house. The way that you've built the way that you've built the addition onto it. So you're essentially changing a house that was well square, almost vertically oriented to something that was horizontally oriented. And now it looks like the side of a normal bungalow. Just 
But my read, but again, I also appreciate that it's an incredibly challenging lot. You don't have many options. I agree with that. It is a challenging lot, and um, there's not many areas that we could do the addition um, to make it work and make it more desirable for the common lifestyle. But we did recess that addition back, so it is not the same front plane as the front of the house. So that two-dimensional uh, rendering doesn't really give it the depth that it no, no, that it should have showing that the addition does step back from the front, the front line of the house. No, and and that is absolutely appreciated. And and, and just, it just now looks like it's the side elevation of a normal bungalow, and that's what's being presented to the street. Again, just yep. just a just a comment. All right, thank you. Yep. Thanks, Commissioner Henningsen. Any other comments or questions that have not already been addressed? Before we close for deliberation. Uh, Mr. Hopkins, Mr. Doney, want to say anything before we close? Uh, no, thank you. I'm sorry you broke up. Uh, thank you very much for your time, but no, that's all we have. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's close for deliberation. Uh, Commissioner Heinemann, I'm going to kick it over to you because you had some very thoughtful comments and, and questions. Um, I, I don't know that I have that much to say. Um, I think we just um, need uh, more information um, on the drawings in the form of notes, what's existing, what's to remain, an accurate representation of the um, existing and then um, we probably just need the applicants to consult with staff on some of the um, approvable materials. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Henningsen. I, I, I still think I would like to see that middle that middle brick parged column remain. Okay. And then I'm curious if other commissioners think I'm absolutely crazy about how the addition is that essentially turns this house to look like the side of a normal bungalow with an addition. But again, I absolutely agree. Incredible. There's not much you can do with the with a lot. Commissioner Walker. I, I, I think AJ makes a really good point. The, the front street presence of this house could could stand for a little bit more. Um, heft, heft or welcoming or just something stronger to to make me know looking at this structure. I'm looking at the front of a house. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's a design detail I would not know how to do, but it's not substantial enough where the front of the house is. So it doesn't present like the it front of a house. Like the side of the house. It, it, okay. All right. Commissioner yeah, Goodwin. It does set back uh, to the applicant's uh, comment. It, does, it is set back, and I can't tell how much, but it's set back several feet, which is certainly going to help, but you don't see on the front elevation. Front elevation. Yeah, so that would be something that we need a little more documentation on. Is that what you're saying? No, if you, if you look at the right elevation, you'll see how, how far it's set back. All right. Any other comments before we get to a motion? Okay. Um, Commissioner Hyman, I'm going to come back to you. Do you feel uh, like you can make a motion on this one? Uh, yeah, I think I can craft a motion. Um, uh, it, it'll it'll closely follow the um, the staff analysis. Okay. I would move to continue this project based on the following that we need um, an accurate representation of existing conditions and we need clarity on fenestration changes at the front porch And we need thorough notes on existing materials and conditions and proposed materials and conditions. I 
we need applicants to consult with staff on approvable materials. Applicants to consult with staff on porch rails. Applicants to consult with staff on the beam column relationship. That the existing center pier at the front porch is to remain. That the right elevation needs fenestration. That clustered windows need shared jams. No aprons at exterior windows. No pork chop eaves. Clarification on charging at foundation on existing and proposed. Documentation of non-historic windows. Information on siding below vinyl, siding under vinyl. Um, fence information, HVAC screening information. Um, Existing trees and tree protection plans. Does anybody need to add anything to that? Yes, no, okay. I'm not, I, can I just reference chapter six? Is that okay? And chapter seven? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second. I think we lost audio to the room. Uh, no, we're here. So we're just quiet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We were wondering if we lost you. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were writing. Okay. All right. So we have Jessica's motion seconded by Commissioner Hayden. Any further discussion of the motion? All right. Let's vote. Commissioner Walker. 
Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Hindman. Yes. Commissioner Peretti. Yes. Motion to continue passes 7 0. Thank you, Michael and Michael. All right. Meeting minutes, please. Meeting minutes. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. let's see. First, we have, have all the minutes. Um, May 12th. Who has May 12th covered? Oh, can you turn uh -huh. your mic, please? Thank you. My mic off. I mean, Okay, just give me a sec. So I went over the minutes, the May minutes, um, a couple of months ago. Christy, do you remember? We fixed them. Okay, so, th but then we didn't vote on them? Right. So do I need to go through all the comments again before we vote on them? We fixed all the comments that you gave us. Okay. And so if you're okay with them, yeah. we can vote on them. Yes. Okay. All right, so May 12th minutes. Yeah, I, I make a motion to approve the May 12th minutes. All right, do we have a second? Where are you at? Yeah, okay, second it. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Walker, seconded by Commissioner Hayden. Any discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Walker, Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Hindman. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve May 12th minutes passes 7 0. Let's move on to June 9th. I didn't. I did. You. I was going to say I didn't see any changes, but. Go on. No, no, no. I did not see any. I can only speak up until I left. So the okay. last, I think, two items mm -hmm. you would have to verify, but I didn't see anything prior to that. So okay, I would make a motion to approve. All right, make a motion. Uh, Commissioner Hayden has made a motion to approve the June 9th uh, minutes. Do we have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Walker. Any discussion of the motion? All right. Uh, let's vote. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Hindman. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve the June 9th minutes passes 7 0. All right. July 14th. I had those. All right. Commissioner Bonaparte. The only thing, and I don't know if it needs to be changed, but the only thing I noticed is that um, there was a case where we approved uh, removal of a tree, and we didn't note any um, any what am I trying to say guideline. So that was okay. the only thing. I don't know if it matters, but I just wanted to mention it. Christy, should we did did we? Uh, note the guideline in the meeting. Do you remember Commissioner? You, I, I, I'm not clear on the question. Are we missing? Are we missing a notation in the in the minutes? Yeah. So okay. I'm trying to find out if we're missing the notation or if it never happened. So Commissioner Bonaparte, do you know if we noted the guideline when we? Oh, I'm I'm just going off of the meeting minutes. It's not referenced in the meeting minutes. Okay. So, Michelle, just, what's the address? Is it Dilworth Road West, Joan Hobbenreiser's project? Yes, yeah, 1615 Dil Road, Dilworth Road West. Yes. You uh, unfortunately you did not set the commission did not set a guideline. Okay. Um, so that's why it's not there. All right. So Commissioner Bonaparte, it sounds like the minutes are correct. You want to make a motion? I do. I move to accept the June, July meeting minutes. All right. Who's going to be your second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Hayden. Motion made by Commissioner Bonaparte. 
any motion or any discussion of the motion? Let's vote. Commissioner Walker, Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Hindman. Yes. Commissioner Parati, yes. Motion to accept minutes for July 14th passes 7 0. And now, with feeling, August 11th. I had August. Okay. I have some minor things. I don't think that they affect the substance of the meeting. Um, okay. But there's, I don't know, maybe a half a dozen. Should I just go over them with you really quick? Uh, sure. Let's get them on the record. Okay, sure. Um, on the on page one, um, PJ Henningsen needs to be identified as the vice chairperson. Okay. On page two, under index of addresses, um, there's just a spelling error with addresses and some some tabbing going on. Okay. On page five, Commissioner Walker's name needs to be spelled correctly. Mm hmm. On Spell page nine, on page nine, under the motion. Um, there needs to be a period in between public right of way and it is okay to remove the hackberry trees. Okay. Uh, this one is a question on page 12. It says that um, Commissioner Henningsen return arrives at the meeting and on page 13, it says he returns to the meeting in the next in the next application. I haven't seen that before. Is that. It's it's because he came um mid he came mid mid application. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that was shown the way we wanted to show it. Yep. On page fourteen, Commissioner Parati's name needs to be spelled correctly. That's everything. Okay. <laughs> no Thank content. You. No content changes to the to the actual motions. Okay, so that's included in the record. So do you want to make a motion with those changes? I move to approve the August 11th meetings with the changes on the record. Second. All right. Excellent. Who's going to be the second? Nichelle just seconded me. Oh, Nichelle. Okay. Commissioner Bonaparte just seconded. Commissioner Thank Hyman. You. Uh, any discussion of the motion? All right. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Bonaparte? Yes. Commissioner Hindman? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to approve passes 7 0. Oh. oh, I do. I have a June 30th. Thanks, Cindy. Yes. Thank you. Do we have a June 30th uh, checker? It's short, we can look at it. Okay, just June. Well, let's look at it now. I can tell you. Well, and I watched it from 320 on too. So um mm -hmm. sure, sure. Yep. Yeah. And Jim would handle the other one. Sorry, uh -huh. my mic's been off. I uh, watched the other one at home because, you know, apparently I have no life. Uh, <laughs> actually, I have a lot of life, so maybe I'm just crazy. Um, why don't we just take a little moment to do a quick. If we can all just kind of look at it. Uh, it takes a village, so let's just do that, please.
I didn't see any uh, mistakes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else see any typos or content that's wrong? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, well, when we have those as opposed to content related issues, I do need uh, Jim, do you mind making a motion on that one on, on this one? Yes, yes. With the make a motion to approve with the noted uh, changes. OK, all right, so we have a motion by Commissioner. Hayden, seconded by Commissioner Walker. Any discussion of the motion? All right. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Henningsen. Yes. Commissioner Hayden. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Commissioner Bonaparte. Yes. Commissioner Heinemann. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve the June 30 minutes passes 7 0. All right. Um, so. Let's see here. We have reached the end of the agenda. Is there any further business to discuss? <laughs> I'm guessing not as in I see Mr. Hayden heading out. Um, if no, this meeting is adjourned at. 713 PM. Thank you so much. Thank you for the extra time and for your hard work. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night.